Chapter 26 Luo Chun, Luo Chin, who was walking in the guarding forest, suddenly heard a full of energy voice coming from behind. Xiao Gong, why are you here? Luo Chin turned around and looked at Xiao Gong in surprise and asked, Ah, I came to send fireworks to Linghua. Xiao Gong said, I originally planned to come this morning, but something unexpected happened in the morning, so I can only come in the evening after I'm done. Xiao Gong, you don't have to go. Luo Chun stopped Xiao Gong and said, Huh, why? Xiao Gong asked in confusion. I just came out of Kamasato's house. Calculating the time, she should have rested, Luo Chen said. So early. Xiao Gong was a little confused. Even if the eldest lady had a regular schedule, she couldn't go to bed so early, right? Ling Hua drank some wine. Luo Chun said, she can't hold her liquor, so she probably went to bed early. Ah, uh, okay. Xiao Gong nodded and said, but Xiao Gong's eyes darkened. She knew Ling Hua basically didn't drink a drop of alcohol. Could it be that Ling Hua accompanied him to drink? Besides delivering fireworks to Ling Hua, do you have anything else to do? Luo Chen looked at Xiao Gong and asked, No, I'm going home after delivering them to her. Xiao Gong shook her head and said, How about you accompany me for a walk? Luo Chen invited, Okay. Xiao Gong nodded quickly. The two toasted and strolled by the stream. It was dark, and the fireflies began to fly around like stars falling on the earth. Tomorrow a human will challenge Kujo Sera in the castle tower to a duel in front of the emperor, do you know? Luo Chin suddenly said, I know. Xiao Gong nodded and said, I plan to go and see. For the wishes and beliefs in his heart, he dared to face the general's majesty. I admire him very much. After all, I don't have such courage. I feel scared when I think of the general's appearance. He actually has to face the general's divine power. Xiao Gong sighed. Kujo Sera is a general of Tianling Bugyo. Can he really defeat her? It's hard. Luo Chun shook his head and said, After all, this woman is holding Arataki Ichido's hammer in the plot, and she is not a mortal, but a Tengu. Now she is still young, and her demon power is not strong. When she grows up, she can be as powerful as the great Tengu Sasayuri. Alas, another life is gone. Xiao Gong sighed. If you fail in the duel in front of the emperor, you will accept the divine punishment of the general. Basically, no one can survive under the general's sword. The national closure order and the eye hunting order are clearly wrong. But why did the general issue such policies? Xiao Gong was a little sad. She was just a commoner and generally didn't think about policies. But these two policies had seriously affected people's livelihood. Luo Chin, do you know? Since the eye hunting order was issued, I have been hiding from place to place fearing that the eye of God would be seen by Tianling Fengxing. Xiao Gong said, I have seen a person who became confused after the eye of God was confiscated. The eye of God hosts people's most fundamental wishes. Once it is confiscated, people will also lose their most fundamental wishes in their hearts. Xiao Gong said, Losing wishes is the most terrible thing. The eye hunting order and the locking order are indeed the most wrong policies, but you should not blame the general. Luo Chen shook his head and said, The general has lost too much along the way. She has endured too much pain in the pursuit of eternal progress. The pain made her stubborn. Her original intention was to make Inazuma truly eternal and let her no longer lose everything she loves. It's a pity that she is too paranoid and can't see the truth of the facts, and the dirty politicians have blinded her eyes. Okay. Xiao Gong pouted, saw the sunset fruit tree next to her, ran over, picked two sunset fruits, and handed one to Luo Chun. Xiao Gong wiped the sunset fruit on his clothes and started to eat it. You haven't eaten yet? Luo Chun asked. Yeah, Kamisato House is a little far from Inazuma Castle. I've been traveling all afternoon. Xiao Gong said. I haven't had time to eat yet. Further ahead is Narakami Taisha. It should be time for the priestesses to eat now. Luo Chun calculated the time and said. Let's go. Come with me to Narakami Taisha. I'll treat you to a taste of the cafeteria at Narakami Taisha. Really? Isn't it a hassle? Xiao Gong asked, rubbing his hungry stomach. Of course not. Sometimes people who pray to the gods leave late, and Narakami Taisha will provide them with food and accommodation, so they will cook more food, Luo Chen said. Besides, it's so late now, and this place is so far from Inazuma Castle. There are so many monsters on the road. It's very dangerous. How long will it take you to travel? Luo Chin said, let's go back to Narakami Taisha. You can stay at Narakami Taisha tonight. It happens that tomorrow, Shanzi, Kitsusai Palace and I are going to watch the Imperial Duel. 
Then we will take you back to Inazuma Castle. Advertisement, okay. Then I'll trouble you. Xiao Gong thought about it and nodded to agree with Luo Chen. Not long after, the two returned to Narakami Taisha. Lord Luo Chen, Lord Luo Chen, the priestesses who saw Luo Chen were very happy to greet Luo Chen, and Luo Chen responded to each of them with a smile. When they arrived at the cafeteria, many priestesses were sitting there to eat. Luo Chen and Xiao Gong each got a meal. Luo Chun took Xiao Gong to sit next to Zhu Qi Xing, Lord Luo Chun. Seeing Luo Chin, Zhu Qi Xing thought of the way Luo Chun pinched her face before, and her face turned red. Axing, where are Xinxi and Kitsis again? Have they eaten? Luo Chin asked. Yes, Lord Gongshu and Lord Saini just finished their meal and went back. Zhu Qi Xing nodded and said, then looked at Xiao Gong curiously and asked, Who is this? Her name is Naganohara Xiao Gong, the owner of Naganohara Fireworks Shop. Luo Chin introduced, it's too late. Let her stay at Naruto Taisha for one night. Axing, you can arrange a guest room for her later. Okay. Zhu Qixing nodded and then said, are you Xiao Gong? I heard that your fireworks are very good, right? He he, hello. Xiao Gong smiled and greeted. Soon, after several people finished their meal and just walked out of the cafeteria, they heard the voice of Ye Shinsi. Aiken, are you back? The three people looked over and saw Ye Shinsi walking quickly. Lord Gongshur, times two Shenxi. Seeing Ye Shenxi, Xiao Gong and Zhu Qixing greeted her. Hello. He looked at Xiao Gong curiously, and the eightfold god's son threw himself into Luo Chen's arms. They? Xiao Gong was stunned when he saw the two people sticking to each other. You don't know yet, Zhu Qixing said with a smile. Master Gong Si and Master Luo Chen are lovers. They are super loving. Have fun reading every day during the 11th. Chapter 27. Are they lovers? Hearing this, Xiao Gong felt a huge sense of loss. Eh, what's wrong with you? Zhu Qi Xing looked at Xiao Gong curiously and asked. It's okay. Xiao Gong smiled far-fetchedly and said, I'm a little tired. Please arrange a room for me. No problem. Zhu Qi Xing nodded and said, Come with me. This is what we just packed. You can just move in. Zhu Qi Xing took Xiao Gong to a house and said, There are disposable toiletries inside. Okay. I know, thank you. Xiao Gong nodded absent mindedly. It's okay. It's my job. Zhu Qi Xing said, turned around and left. Ah. After walking into the room and washing up simply, Xiao Gong sat on the bed with her face supported. Aren't we friends? Gong Si is such an excellent woman. I should be happy for him. Why? Why do I feel a little uncomfortable? Xiao Gong covered her chest and murmured. Aiken, the little girl from the Naganohara family seems to have a good impression of you. Ye Shinsi said while holding Luo Chan on the bed in the room. How is that possible? Luo Chen shook his head and said, Xiao Gong is a passionate girl. She is passionate about everyone. She only thinks that the relationship between us is the purest friendship. Hmm? Aiken, you are still so unconfident. Ye Shinsi raised his eyebrows and said, I don't think so. When I hugged you just now, I clearly felt her emotional fluctuations. It's not that she is unconfident. Her emotional fluctuations may be because she is surprised why you threw yourself into my arms. Luo Chen smiled faintly. I can't see that you have a good impression of this little girl. Why don't you give it a try? Yejin Shinsi urged, if you don't try, won't you give up a good opportunity? Forget it. If I think that tenderness is only for me, I will end up unhappy if I want to possess it for myself. Luo Chen looked at Yejin Shinsi's eyes and said softly, besides, I am very narrow-minded and selfish. I can't bear to see my girl being gentle to other men. Well, no man would tolerate this. Yejin Shinsi thought for a while and said, Okay, but Ah Chun, the night is long. Don't you plan to do something to make yourself happy? Of course I do. Luo Chun stretched out his hand to pinch Yejin Shinsi's ear, and then pulled the quilt over to wrap them up. The next morning, Luo Chun and Yejin Shinsi walked out of the room and saw Xiao Gong sitting on a chair beside him and dozing off, with two dark circles under his eyes. Xiao Gong. Did you not sleep well last night? Is the bed uncomfortable? Luo Chen walked over and asked. Ah. Uh, the sleepy Xiao Gong was startled by Luo Chen. She looked at Ye Shinsi next to her and waved her hands quickly, saying, No, no, the bed in the shrine is very soft and comfortable. Xiao Gong was indeed tossing and turning in bed, unable to fall asleep. As soon as she closed her eyes, she saw Ye Shinsi and Luo Chen hugging each other. She was so annoyed. When Luo Chen heard Xiao Gong say this, he didn't think much about it and went to the side to call Huzagong. Yishinsi looked at Xiao Gong with heavy dark circles under his eyes, and she understood a little. 
Oh, these two people are in love, but one dares not say it, and the other dares not think about it. It's so interesting. As a fun person, Ye Shenzi originally planned to have fun, but she still walked over and patted Xiaogong on the shoulder. The little girl of the Naganohara family, if you care about it, don't hide it in your heart, Ye Shenzi said earnestly. Lord Palace. Xiaogong widened her eyes and didn't understand what Ye Shinsi meant by saying this to her. Advertisement, think about it yourself. The eightfold godson smiled faintly, and when he saw Luo Chun and Hu Zhigong coming out, he hurried over. Let's eat together, and after dinner we will go to the castle tower. Hu Zhigong said, Okay. Luo Chun and the other two nodded, and went to the cafeteria to eat together. After dinner, a problem arose. We can all fly. What about this little girl? Hu Zhigong looked at Xiao Gong and suddenly asked, Uh. Xiao Gong widened her eyes, as if, Hey, what should she do? If she walks slowly, she will never reach the castle tower. Is this difficult to handle? Ah Chun, you take her with you, the eightfold godson said. You brought the little girl here, so you have to take her back? Xiao Gong looked at Luo Chun. Godson is right. Luo Chun nodded, looked at Xiao Gong and said, Xiao Gong, then I will take you there. Do you mind? No, it's okay. Xiao Gong shook his head, indicating that he didn't mind. Now that the matter has been resolved, let's go, the Eightfold Godson urged. She still wanted to see the scene of mortals facing the might of God. Luo Chen didn't say much. He put his arms around Xiao Gong's slender waist and picked her up as a princess. Exclamation point. Xiao Gong's face suddenly turned red. She had never had such close contact with the opposite S asterisk gex. But the next moment, Luo Chan soared into the sky, and the three of them quickly rushed to the castle tower. Xiao Gong looked down and could no longer see the houses and trees below. It was obvious that the distance was very high now. She was so scared that she hugged Luo Chen tightly, hiding her soft body in his arms. The girl in his arms was too shy to speak, and Luo Chen didn't speak either. Feeling Xiao Gong's explosive figure, he secretly thought that she was worthy of being the first fire sea in Tevat. This figure is good. Not like a certain hall master at all, don't you think? The first fire in Tevat? Son of God, what do you think? Hu Zhigong sent a voice message to the Eightfold Godson and asked curiously, What do you think? The Eightfold Godson asked, It's this little girl, Hu Zhigong said. Hey, I'm just adding fuel to the fire. Ye Shinsi laughed and said, These two people obviously like each other. One foolishly thinks that the girl doesn't like him, and the other is timid and dares not express it. Isn't this helping them? Hu Zhigong's mouth twitched slightly, and she said, Aren't you messing around? This little girl is just a mortal, with a lifespan of only a hundred years. How can she accompany Aiken for a long time? You have to know that there is only a tragic ending between the immortal species and the short-lived species. So what? Ye Shenzi shrugged and said, Aiken has the ability to resurrect you. And he also told me that he controls the power of life and death. It shouldn't be difficult for Xiao Gong to live forever right? That being said, is immortality really good for a mortal? Hu Zhigong asked. What does that have to do with me? Ye Shinsi said, I just want to see Ah Chun satisfied. Besides, all mortals pursue immortality, and immortality is not necessarily a shackle. You, you are really obsessed with Luo Chun, Hu Zhigong said helplessly. Chapter 28 The three of them soon arrived at the castle tower. The huge statue of the thousand-armed and hundred-eyed god was already inlaid with many gods' eyes of various attributes. The martial art stage of the castle tower was surrounded by the people of Inazuma. The duel in front of the emperor had not appeared for many years. They just came to see the excitement. For them, this was just a spice of their miserable life. There were two figures sitting on the martial arts stage, a man and a woman. The woman was the general of the heavenly lord, Kujo Sarah, and the man had brown hair and a tall figure. He had a purple thunder element god's eye hanging on his waist and was wiping a famous sword in his hand. Is this the man who initiated the duel in front of the emperor? Someone among the people recognized the man and exclaimed, I've seen him before. He seems to be very opposed to the eye hunting order. How dare he initiate a duel in front of the emperor and fight with General Kujo? Isn't this a suicide mission? Yes, General Kujo is the most powerful warrior in the shogunate. Why does he have the right? The people gathered together and whispered. Obviously, they were not optimistic about the young man. After all, in their opinion, Kujo Sarah's military strength was absolutely unquestionable. Not far from the martial arts stage, the heads of the three magistrates sat there. 
As witnesses of the duel in front of the emperor, they were here to watch. Master Hiragi, Master Kamisato, why are there three empty seats next to the general's seat? Kujo Takayuki, who was sitting in the middle of the three, wondered. Shouldn't there only be seats for the general and the chief priest? I don't know either. Is there any distinguished guest? Hiragi Shinsuke shook his head, indicating that he didn't know. It's better not to guess what the general is thinking, Shinli Ling said lightly. He knew that one of them should be for Luo Chun, and he didn't know the other one. Soon, General Lei Dian came out with great power, but she didn't speak, as if she was waiting for something. When General Lei Dian appeared, everyone suddenly became quiet. Soon, Three streams of light swept from the sky and stopped above the castle tower, attracting everyone's attention. People then discovered that there was a man and two women in the stream of light, and the man was holding a girl in his arms, who seemed to be Xiao Gong. Is Xiao Gong in Lord Luo Chen's arms? In the crowd of community officials, Shunli Ling Hua stared blankly at Luo Chun holding Xiao Gong, and subconsciously touched the corner of her mouth. The warm touch was still lingering in her mind. The three slowly fell down, and Luo Chun gently put Xiao Gong down. Being watched by so many people, even Xiao Gong blushed and quickly ran down and hid in the crowd. You are here. General Lei Dian saw the three people. His eyes lit up, and he walked over. General, Kitsuzi Palace greeted. General Lei Dian nodded and walked over with the three people. Who is he? Luo Chen's appearance made everyone in an uproar. They all knew Ye Shinko, the chief priest of Narakami Taisha. Then who is this man in luxurious clothes and the woman with white hair and fox ears next to him? But it was obvious that General Lei Dian didn't seem to want to explain. After waiting for the three people to sit down, she turned to look at the young man on the martial arts stage and said emotionlessly, As a mortal, you dare to challenge the duel in front of the emperor. I admire your courage. If you win the duel, I can grant one of your requests. If I win, I don't want a reward. I just want to convey my wish to the general. The young man said loudly. Advertisement, then I'll tell you after you win. General Lei Dian said calmly, and then turned around and sat down. Let the duel begin. General Lei Dian said to the two people who had already started to confront each other on the field. Everyone was silent. This will be a tough battle. Kujo Sarah usually uses a bow as a weapon, but she is good at various weapons. On this small martial arts stage, she changed to a samurai sword. Huh. The young man clenched the long sword in his hand rushed towards Kujo Sarah quickly, and then slashed with the long sword in his hand. Kujo Sarah just raised her hand and blocked his powerful and heavy blow. As a Tengu, her physical strength is far greater than that of the young man as a mortal. Raising her hand to repel the young man, Kujo Sarah wielded the samurai sword and rushed forward quickly, but was directly picked away by the young man. Without giving the young man a chance to breathe, Kujo Sarah directly swung two right oblique slashes, directly forcing the young man into a corner. Seeing that he could not resist Kujo Sarah's attack head-on, the young man dodged Kujo Sarah's slash by moving sideways, and then turned to her back and slashed horizontally. Kujo Sarah quickly swung her knife to block, and turned to follow with a horizontal slash. The young man reacted very quickly, jumped up to dodge Kujo Sarah's knife, and wanted to follow Kujo Sarah again. But Kujo Sarah did not give him a chance, grabbed his arm, and pulled him up with unmatched strength and then threw him to the side. The young man rolled on the ground twice, supported himself with his left hand, and barely stabilized his body, then jumped high and slashed hard. Kujo Sarah calmly swung her knife to block, followed by a right diagonal slash, and the young man quickly dodged and distanced himself from Kujo Sarah. At this time, the young man's breathing has become rapid and sweat drips on the ground. The high-intensity battle makes his physical strength drain quickly. On the other hand, Kujo Sarah did not pant or sweat at all, and seemed to be at ease. The young man stood up and stepped on his feet a few times. Kujo Sarah narrowed his eyes slightly and rushed over quickly. The samurai sword slashed down. The young man hurriedly blocked it, but Kujo Sarah directly shook the sword away, lifted him up with one hand, and then slammed him to the ground. Ahem. Kujo Sarah's move almost made the young man faint directly, but he did not relax, rolling on the ground to avoid the stab of Kujo Sarah's sword. Then, Kujo Sarah kicked him out with great force and hit him heavily on the edge pillar of the martial arts stage, and then rolled to the ground. Puff. A mouthful of blood spurted out, and the young man stood up tremblingly, staring at Kujo Sarah not far away. The situation on the field was very urgent, but the eightfold godson held his chin and asked, Aiken, it seems that Jujo Sarah is still better now. 
Luo Chen nodded and said, Indeed, Jujo Sera is not comparable to him in terms of skills or physical fitness. This battle is a foregone conclusion. The young man with the knife of Jujo Sera dodged very urgently, and Jujo Sera had no pressure at all. The result was obvious. Alas, it's really boring. It seems that this warrior who faced the gods today will also lose his life. The Eightfold God Sun yawned and said, If he fails in the duel in front of the emperor, he will naturally face divine punishment. I will embed his divine eye on the statue, General Lei Dian said in an emotionless voice. Chapter 29 At this time, the atmosphere on the field has reached a fever pitch. The young man reached out to wipe the blood from the corner of his mouth. Knowing that he could not compete with Kujo Sarah in terms of skills, he decided to use elemental power. Purple thunder instantly filled his whole body, dyeing the sword with thunder, and crackling lightning exploded in the air. Kujo Sarah's eyes did not fluctuate at all, and lightning began to appear on her samurai sword, and Kujo Sarah's lightning seemed to be more intense. With the blessing of elemental power, the young man rushed towards Kujo Sarah with the sword in hand. Oof. Kujo Sarah's eyes turned cold, looking at the galloping young man, her waist slightly bent down, holding the sword in reverse, and the next moment, she turned into a lightning flash across the entire martial arts stage and passed by the young man. After Kujo Sarah took action, the entire martial arts field was silent, and everyone's eyes were fixed on the martial arts stage. The figure of the young man who was originally galloping seemed to be fixed. With a bang, the long sword in the young man's hand broke directly and turned into two halves, and blood splashed directly from the young man's chest. A hideous wound on the young man's chest appeared in front of everyone, and the white bones were exposed. The young man seemed to be unable to support his body anymore, and fell to the ground weakly, but he used the broken sword to support himself and prevent himself from falling. You lost. The samurai sword was placed on the young man's neck, and Kujo Sara said coldly, I lost. The young man coughed up blood, but suddenly grinned and laughed loudly. What are you laughing at? Kujo Sara frowned. This guy obviously lost, but he dared to laugh? Doesn't he know that he will face divine punishment? Feng Yuan Mini in the crowd looked at this scene, clenched his hands tightly, his body was trembling, and blood flowed down his hands. Don't be presumptuous in front of the emperor. Looking at the laughing young man, Kujo Sara said coldly, I don't disrespect the general. The young man gritted his teeth and said despite the severe pain, I am a citizen of Einishur, and the general is my eternal belief. No matter when, human power will eventually be exhausted, and I will not be sad about my own powerlessness. The young man looked up and looked at the indifferent purple figure on the high platform. He knew very well the consequences of losing the duel in front of the emperor, but he did not regret it. Looking at the anxious Feng Yuan Mini in the audience, the young man smiled and shook his head and said loudly, I am not afraid of death. Compared to death, I have more things I want to witness and more people's hearts I want to awaken. The general is great, but it does not mean that she will not make mistakes. My will is insignificant, but what about the people of Inazuma? One person? Hundreds? Thousands? Or even tens of thousands? The young man's eyes were firm. I firmly believe that the wishes of the people can change the will of the gods. I may not be able to witness the arrival of that day, but I have always been involved. The young man looked at the noble and untouchable gods who slowly walked down from the air from the martial arts stage. He gritted his teeth, propped up his weak and broken body with a broken knife, and stood up straight. As a warrior, no matter when, he will never put down the sword in his hand to survive. This is his belief. Even in the face of death, he will never surrender. General, as a warrior, I want to witness your sword. Dying under that sword is my lifelong wish. Yes. General Lei Dian had no expression on his face. His dream slowly emerged from his chest. His huge momentum made all the humans on the field dare not look directly at him and kneel on the ground. That was the power from the gods. How could mortals resist it? The thunder in the sky roared continuously. That was the will of Ming Shun, representing the absolute ultimate martial arts and symbolizing the eternal sword light. Even the sun dimmed and the sky became dark. The figure of the young man was like a small boat in the tsunami, and his pale face, due to excessive blood loss, was full of determination. Advertisement the Eye of God seemed to sense the extreme wish of its master. In an instant, the majestic thunder element completely bloomed, blooming the most dazzling light, even in the face of gods. Ah! Even the creatures on the earth dare to face the power of thunder. 
The young man faced the sword light that shattered the space, and the roaring thunder on the broken sword was full of thunder, trying to resist this Wuxiang sword. Luo Chen watched this scene on the high platform. Even though the sword of General Lei Dian was not one ten thousandth as powerful as when he fought with him, how could humans resist the power of gods? Even if the young man bloomed all his strength, Wu Xiang's sword passed through the young man's body as if there was no resistance. The next moment, the young man's body slowly turned into ashes. At the last moment of his life, he looked back at Feng Yuan Wanya and the crowd, his eyes full of satisfaction with Wu Xiang's sword and reluctance to part with his friend forever. Bang! As the young man's figure completely turned into ashes and disappeared from this world, his eye of God also completely dimmed, turned into a misty gray, and flew out. Seeing this, Kujo Sera was about to grab the eye of God when he saw a figure suddenly appear in the crowd. Wrapped in the breeze, the figure almost instantly arrived next to the eye of God, holding the eye of God, which still had the element of lightning on it. Even if the high temperature and lightning burned his palm, he did not let go. Not daring to stop for a moment, he drove the eye of God, and the breeze circulated, taking him to fly away. Maple Leaf, how dare you be so presumptuous in front of the Lord of the Grand Palace? Kujo Sarah reacted, shouted angrily, spread his wings, and was about to chase. But the next moment, Maple Leaf had disappeared from the field of vision. Damn it! Kujo Sarah was angry. She looked at General Lei Dian and said respectfully, General, I will lead the Tianling to arrest the criminals. No need. General Lei Dian waved his hand lightly and said, Include Feng Yuan Wanya in the eye hunting order. After that, General Lei Dian looked at Luo Chun, who was sitting not far away with a smile, and felt helpless. Just now, this guy made trouble and imposed a space shackle invisible to the naked eye on her. She couldn't move her whole body, so she had to watch Feng Yuan Wanya escape. If she took action, Feng Yuan Wanya would not be able to walk out and would have to surrender. Forget it. It's just a god's eye. At most, I can only collect another one. General Lei Dian walked to Luo Chun and said in a cold voice, You, come with me to the castle tower. I want to talk to you inside. After that, General Lei Dian turned into a flash of lightning and disappeared. SK, 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 what an unkind puppet. Ye Shinsi said a little unhappy. Since it's over, let's go to the castle tower. Luo Chun stood up and said, I haven't seen what the castle tower looks like yet. Ing is really, hiding in that corner can avoid wear and tear? What does she think? Kitsai Palace frowned and said angrily. Who knows? Ye Shinko shrugged, and the three walked side by side to the castle tower. Chapter 30 In the castle tower, Luo Chin and the other two walked in and saw General Lei Dian already meditating. Hearing the footsteps of the three people, General Lei Dian opened his eyes and said lightly, the inner world is waiting for you in the pure land of one heart. As soon as the voice fell, the three people found that they had arrived in the pure land of one heart. Lei Dian stood facing them, watching the three people coming, and walked over. Luo Chun, why did you stop the general just now? Lei Dian asked first. Don't be angry. Luo Chun smiled and said, I think what the young man said makes sense. Ing, didn't you say that no one can shake your will? I'm curious whether people's wishes can really shake your will. Luo Chen said, Let them wake you up and let you know your mistakes. Humph, a mere mortal also wants to shake the gods? Lei Dian was very disdainful of this. A tiny insect is also worthy of looking up at the stars. Ying, don't be so confident. Luo Chen said. Lei Ying Ying didn't want to pay attention to this irritating guy. She and he seemed to be at odds. Why did he always confront her every time she said something? So, have you recovered? When can you revive Jin? Lei Yingying asked. Not yet. Luo Chen shrugged. After all, Lei Dianzhen was a demon god. It was much more difficult to revive Lei Dianzhen than to revive Hu Zhaigong. Lei Yingying nodded, looked at Ye Shen Zi and Hu Zhaigong and said, I called you here to discuss something with you. I discussed it with the general and decided to make Luo Chen the second god of my Inazuma. The great god official is not worthy of the status of a god. Lei Yingying said seriously. She wanted Luo Chen a god with the power of resurrection, to be bound to Inazuma, so that she would not be afraid of her friends dying in the future. As for Luo Chun not recognizing her eternity, so what? Lei Yingying believed that Luo Chun had not really seen the meaning of eternal existence, and she would slowly guide him to eternity! Exclamation point. Ye Shen Zi and Hu Zhaigong were shocked. They didn't expect Lei Yingying to still have this idea? Conferring the gods is not a trivial matter. 
The seven countries are now in a delicate balance. The emergence of a new god will break this balance. Each god is the pillar of the country. Only when the gods are still there can diplomacy have confidence. Didn't you see that Mondstadt, where the wind god disappeared for a long time, almost stationed troops in Fatui? But with one more god, it means that this country will have high-end combat power far beyond other countries. After all, the combat power of gods cannot be raised by numbers. It's not impossible to confer the gods, but I have a request. Yajinko thought for a moment and said, even if he has conferred the gods, he must live in Mingxin Taisha. You are not allowed to rob my people. Kitsuzi Palace. Lei Yingying. Bungbu has lived. Really Bungbu has lived. Lei Yingying now wants to pry open Yajinko's head to see what this guy is thinking. They are all thinking about Luo Chin's conferring the gods. Where is this guy considering Luo Chun to live? Of course. Lei Dian Ying was speechless for a moment, and then said, I will also reserve a place for him in the castle tower. What's the point of you saying so much? Let's see the opinions of the parties involved first. Hu Zhigong interrupted the two and said. The three people's eyes shifted to Luo Chen. I don't care. Luo Chen said. Just make the arrangements. I will do whatever you arrange. The opinions of the Son of God are my opinions. In that case, then let's deify him. Lei Dianying nodded, looked at the Eightfold Son of God and Hu Zhigong and said. Then you two. Discuss with me the title of the god Luo Chun should be canonized as Advertisement M. Luo Chun looked at the three people sitting cross legged and started to discuss. This pure land was formed by Lei Dianying's closed inner state of mind. The atmosphere was very depressing, and Luo Chun didn't like this atmosphere very much. You guys chat, I'll go out for a walk first. Luo Chun said to Lei Dianying, Ying, let me out? Lei Dianying nodded and kicked him out of the pure land. The scene in front of Luo Chen changed, and then he saw the paralyzed face of General Lei Dian very close to his face. General, what are you doing? Luo Chun was startled and asked curiously. This body is observing you, General Raiden said bluntly. Since I saw you last time, this body's program seems to have some problems, and I always think of you inexplicably. This body wants to see what abilities you have. Could it be that you have influenced this body's will? Luo Chun was slightly stunned and asked the system in his heart, General, is she affected by the buff of the first affection in Tevat? Yes, Master, the first affection in Tevat is for all opposite sexes. Although General Raiden is a puppet, she perfectly inherited the body of the movie, so she is naturally a woman, the system voice sounded. Although General Raiden has self-awareness, he is not a living being after all. The buff effect of the first affection in Tevat has a greater impact on her. 6. Luo Chin's eyes widened. If he could be affected by the first affection in Tevat, wouldn't that be it? Luo Chun was thinking, and at this moment the general's face was closer, and Luo Chun could already feel her breath. As expected of a god, the general's face was extremely beautiful, without a single flaw, like the most perfect work of art. Suddenly, General Lei Dian tapped Luo Chun's face lightly. Huh. The warm feeling disappeared in an instant, and now it was Luo Chun's turn to be confused. General, where did you learn this thing? Luo Chun touched his face and asked curiously, Huh, don't you like it? General Lei Dian was not shy at all, perhaps she didn't know what shyness was. This body saw it from the thing called Light Novel, sent by the Eightfold God's son to the inner side. General Lei Dian said seriously, In it, it seems that this action is to express closeness, so you like me? Luo Chun was helpless. Shouldn't this Tevat's first affectionate buff have little effect on gods? What does it feel like to like? General Lei Dian frowned slightly and asked, This body doesn't know what to like. Forget it, General. You should read more light novels and understand what it means to like. Luo Chun suddenly felt bored. General Lei Dian was like this, ignorant and didn't know anything. Even if he could be happy with her, it would be like being with a doll, and there was no fun. Boring things. Hearing Luo Chun asking her to read light novels, General Lei Dian frowned and said. The next moment, General Lei Dian called out, Sarah? It happened that Kujo Sarah was on duty at the castle tower today. She heard General Lei Dian's voice and hurried in. Kujo Sarah didn't even raise her head and saluted directly, saying, General, reading books every day is fun. Chapter 31 Saluo, go to Yedu and find me some light novels. General Raiden said seriously, the kind with romance, light novels with romance? Kujo Saluo was surprised that the general wanted to read this. She looked up and found that there was a young man beside the general, 
the one who came down from the sky to watch the duel in front of the emperor. At this time, Luo Chun stopped General Raiden and said, Don't bother so much. The Son of God has a lot of such books. When she finishes discussing things, you can just ask her for them. That's right. General Raiden nodded and said, Then there's nothing to do. Sa Luo, you can leave. Wait. Luo Chun said, I remember that General Kujo is the person who is in charge of the Tianling. Why don't you take me around the Tianling? This. Kujo Sa Luo looked at General Raiden. According to what he said, what he said is the same as what I said. Just obey it directly. General Raiden nodded and said something that shocked Kujo Sa Luo. His name is Luo Chun. He is currently the chief deity of Narakami Taisha Shrine. He is a god, and from now on, he will be the second god of Inazuma. General Raiden introduced. Kujo Sarah's eyes narrowed slightly. Such a young man is actually a god. The general actually said that he will soon be the second god of Inazuma? Equal status with the general. General, come on. Luo Chun pinched General Raiden's face in the shocked eyes of Kujo Sarah. Well, although it is a doll, the skin is smooth, soft to the touch, and warm. Let's go. Luo Chin walked down and looked at Kujo Sera and said, Please take me around the Tenryo. It's my responsibility. Kujo Sera saluted quickly. Since the general said so, she would naturally obey. Kujo Sera followed Luo Chun, and the two walked out of the castle tower. Looking at the Aojia people on the side, Kujo Sera gave them some instructions and took Luo Chun out of the castle tower. How many god's eyes have you confiscated? Looking at the densely packed god's eyes on the thousand-handed hundred-eyed statue, Luo Chun asked with interest. There are already ninety god's eyes embedded in the thousand-handed hundred-eyed statue. Kujo Sarah replied. One was taken away by Feng Yuan Mini today. I heard someone say that after the eye hunting order confiscates the god's eye, the original god will become confused. Do you know about this? Luo Chun asked. I know. Kujo Sarah nodded, but she said firmly. What the general pursues is the eternity of no thoughts and no attachments, abandoning the obsessions of the world and sticking to the unchanging eternity. I can't understand every word and action of the general. But since this is her decision, I believe her. I am the general of Tianling. My duty is to guard in Azuma and implement the will of Ming Shan. Kujo Sara said seriously, no matter whether it is gods or ghosts, if they dare to go against the general, I will eliminate them when I meet them. Luo Chen nodded. Although Kujo Sara was just a rigid person who didn't smile and laughed, her loyalty to General Lei Dian was indeed unquestionable. Although I don't understand why the general appointed you as the new god, from now on, Sarah is naturally willing to fight for you. Kujo Sarah looked at Luo Chen seriously and said, You can tell me everything that Inazuma encounters. I will do my best to solve it within my ability. The two chatted and soon arrived at the Tianling Bugio. However, before they entered the Tianling Bugio, a soldier covered in blood rushed in and fell to the ground when he saw Kujo Sara. General Kujo, the Tamarind Sand has been invaded by 5,000 rebels. 3,000 soldiers are fighting desperately. Request support. After the soldier finished speaking, he fainted on the ground. He was already injured, and time was urgent. He used all his strength to drive the Eye of God to arrive at the Tianling Bugio within an hour. What? Kujo Sara was furious. This group of bandits, how dare they be so presumptuous? Military doctor, carry him down and treat him with all your strength. Shogunate army, assemble all of them. Kujo Sara roared. This group of bandits invaded them from time to time and made trouble everywhere in the name of resisting the general. Advertisement, Lord Luo Chun. I'm very sorry that I can't take you to visit Tianling Bugio today. I will arrange someone to take you to visit. Kujo Sara looked at Luo Chun with a little apology. No problem. Luo Chin waved his hand to show that he didn't care. He said to Kujo Sara, Gathering soldiers now, even if we get there, it will be too late, right? There is no way. Tevat's technology points are still not enough, and the intelligence is not timely at all. It is impossible for the Shogunate army to gather and rush to Tamagosa, even if it is a forced march, it will take three or four hours. By the time they reach the resistance, the Shogunate army will have died. There is no way. We can only march as fast as possible. Kujo Sarah gritted his teeth and said, Forget it. Since the general asked me to be the new god of Inazuma, I will do my part. Luo Chun suddenly stopped the herald and said, There is no need to let the shogunate army assemble. I will take Kujo Sarah with me. Kujo Sama? The herald looked at Kujo Sarah. You. That's 5,000 rebels. Kujo Sarah frowned and said, Without enough power, 
Can you be named a new god by the general? Luo Chun said with a faint smile. Okay. Kujo Sarah did not hesitate, looked at the herald and said, Disband. Show me the way. Seeing this, Luo Chen said nothing more, and the golden power directly wrapped Kujo Sarah, turning into a stream of light and rushing into the sky. Is that young man the new god of Inazuma? The two flew away, and the herald reacted from his shock. He seemed to have heard some big secret. Time was urgent. Luo Chun looked at the anxious look of Jujo Saro and flew towards the Tamagosa with all his strength. In a few minutes, they were close to the Tamagosa. From a distance, they could see chaos and fireworks over there. On the Tamagosa, the situation was completely one-sided at the moment. The resistance army of Haiki Island was led by Wu Lang himself, and most of them were elites. On the Shogunate side, there were not many God's Eye owners, and they were caught off guard. Wu Lang was fighting in the center of the battlefield. In front of him, the group of small soldiers was simply vulnerable. Suddenly, a sense of crisis flashed through Wu Lang's mind, and he quickly hid away. Boom! A golden stream of light fell from the sky and hit the center of the battlefield heavily. In an instant, huge dust and smoke filled the entire battlefield, and the huge shaking of the earth made everyone unstable. The powerful shock wave directly shook the resistance army near the center and flew out, breaking arms and legs and screaming for a while. The shogunate soldiers were protected by a faint golden light and were not affected by the shock wave. What the hell? Goro blocked the flying smoke and looked at the center of the battlefield filled with smoke and dust in shock. Chapter 32 What happened? The sudden change on the battlefield made everyone stop and look at the dust in the center of the battlefield. The dust slowly dissipated, and a big pit appeared in everyone's sight. There were two figures in the pit. One of them was familiar to them. It was Ju Tiao Shaluo. For some reason, they always felt that there was a hint of blush on her face. The other figure was dressed in luxurious clothes, with a hint of golden light on his body and golden wings hovering behind him. He didn't look like a mortal. Zhu Tiao Sha Luo glared at Luo Chun. This guy just did a super British landing and smashed his body to the ground. In order to protect her, Luo Chun held her in his arms at the last moment. Although he put her down quickly, she still felt a little uncomfortable. Who are you? Wu Lang stared at Luo Chin's face and asked in surprise. Kujo Sarah is an old rival and Goro knows exactly what she is capable of. The scene just now was definitely not something she could produce, so only this unknown man was left. This kind of power was far beyond the ability of ordinary original gods. Luo Chan did not answer him, but glanced at the battlefield. Dead and seriously injured soldiers came into view. This was not a battle like playing house in the game in the previous life, but a real river of blood. Luo Chin raised his hand and waved it and the white light spots in the sky directly sank into the injured shogunate army. They felt that their injuries were healed in an instant, got up from the ground, and confronted the rebels with weapons. Goro's eyes widened. With a wave of his hand, he could make thousands of injured soldiers all recover to normal people. Even the Coral Palace Lord, whose Eye of God has extremely powerful healing abilities, could not do it. God. This is definitely a god. At this moment, Goro only had the word God in his mind. The young man in front of him was definitely a god. Such great power was definitely beyond human power. After Luo Chun finished all this, his figure slowly rose into the air, with golden light in his eyes. Countless terrifying black holes with golden light emerged from the sky, aiming at all the rebels. Gudong, after swallowing a mouthful of saliva, Wu Lang couldn't help but feel a little cold in his heart as he looked at this scene that seemed like the end of the world. Facing a god, no matter how many people there were, they were just ants waiting to be slaughtered. On the rebel side, many soldiers could no longer stand steadily. Even the shogunate army was extremely shocked to see the tall figure standing in front of them. Put down your weapons. Luo Chin's voice rang in the ears of all the rebels. His tone was indifferent but unquestionable. Hearing Luo Chin's voice, the rebels were at a loss. Everyone put down your weapons. Wu Lang shouted quickly and took the lead in throwing down his weapons. Facing the order of the gods, just obey. Otherwise, they will all be destroyed in the next moment. Wu Lang did not surrender, but he was unwilling to let these soldiers die at the hands of the gods. Facing the gods, there is no shame in putting down their weapons. Advertisement there was a loud noise. Even their own generals laid down their weapons. All the rebels threw down their weapons, and some of the timid ones directly knelt on the ground. Kujo Sarah stared blankly at Luo Chin's figure in the sky. 
She now understood Luo Chen's words that he was not capable enough. So how could he be deified by the general? He was a real god. People of Haiki Island, you are overstepping your authority. Luo Chen's cold voice sounded, and he stared at the rebels below and said coldly, Tell me, why are you rebelling? We are rebelling against the National Closure Order and the Eye Hunting Order. Wu Lang said loudly, General Lei Dian issued these two policies. The people are living in misery. The Eye Hunting Order has taken away people's wishes. We are only rebelling against these two decrees. Really? Luo Chun seemed to have heard the biggest joke in the world and laughed angrily. Then look at what you are doing. Is it really to rebel against the decree? Or do you want to overthrow the shogunate? Become a king? Wu Lang suddenly felt as if he was carrying a mountain on his back, and Luo Chin's huge momentum directly pressed him to the ground. When Orobath was defeated by the general, you, the defeated, should have sunk into the ground with Haiki Island and Yuan Xia Palace. But the general had mercy on you and gave you the power to govern independently and the ability to have an independent army. He even kept your faith in Orobath and allowed you to believe in a defeated god in a hurry. Luo Chin scolded. Isn't she gentle enough? Isn't she open minded enough? And what did you do? Under the guise of resisting the eye hunting order and the closing order, you carried out rebellion? Is this your way of repaying Mingxin? Luo Chan said, When you encountered the national seclusion order and the eye hunting order, you didn't think about how to solve it peacefully and didn't think about meeting the general to change her mind. Instead, you rebelled at the first time and organized the so-called resistance army. Don't you think it's ridiculous? Even want to overthrow the shogunate? Luo Chin looked at the resistance army coldly and said, It's really ridiculous. A force that doesn't even have gods? Trying to overthrow the country ruled by gods? Stupid, petty, and ridiculous. Under the oppression of Luo Chin's divine power, Wu Lang could only grit his teeth. He couldn't say anything at all. Listening to Luo Chin's sarcasm, he wanted to refute. Do you think your cleverness has worked? Do you see hope? Do you feel victorious? Luo Chun said, you were just courting your own destruction? What you did, didn't it make the already troubled Inazuma even worse? Luo Chan said angrily, If you are dissatisfied with the general's rule, why don't you return to Yuan Xiao Palace and roll back to the dark underground? Why do you have to fan the flames here and try to shake Inazuma's national foundation? You are really disgusting, enjoying the general's protection and Inazuma's warm sunshine while insulting the general's rule? Luo Chen shouted angrily, If the general is really an evil god, why doesn't she kill you? Her Wuxiang sword is enough to make you no longer resentful. Under Luo Chen's anger, the space trembled, and countless golden energies swirled in the black hole, as if all the rebels would be cleansed in the next moment. Under the might of Luo Chen, no one in the resistance army dared to look directly at Luo Chen. They realized how insignificant their power was. In front of the gods, they were as weak as ants. It was ridiculous that they still wanted to try to resist the gods. Luo Chan ignored the resistance army below. His mind was surging, his face was indifferent, and suddenly he seemed to hear something and was silent for a moment. The black holes that covered the sky and the sun in the sky were all closed. Luo Chin put away his might and said coldly, Go back, talk to your rulers and think about what I said today. You should be glad that the general asked to spare your lives. Luo Chun looked at the fleeing resistance army and snorted coldly, Kneel down to thank the general for his kindness. Chapter 33 Luo Chan wanted to punish them, but it was the Eightfold Godson who contacted him. The Eightfold Godson gave him a shield that allowed him to communicate with the Eightfold Godson remotely. Lei Dianying asked Luo Chan to let these rebels go. After all, she and Oroba had an agreement, which was why Lei Dianying could tolerate the rebels' presumption. Luo Chun slowly fell from the sky. All the shogunate troops looked at Luo Chun with admiration. He alone was enough to suppress the entire 5,000-man rebel army. He was really amazing. Lord Luo Chun, why? Kujo Sarah didn't finish, but Luo Chun knew what she meant. Just now was definitely a great opportunity to kill the rebel general Goro. As long as Goro was killed, Haiki Island would be seriously injured. The general hopes to give them another chance. Luo Chun explained, otherwise, I will take action. I see. Hearing that it was the general's reason, Kujo Sarah nodded. The general must have her deep meaning for doing this. Thank you for saving my life. At this time, the shogunate soldier who had just been healed by Luo Chun came over and bowed to Luo Chun. In an instant, there was a crowd of people. It's my job. No need to be so polite. Luo Chun waved his hand and said, Everyone line up. 
Kujo Sarah said seriously. She said to everyone, Let me introduce you. This is Luo Chun, the chief deity of Narakami Taisha. Hello, Lord Luo Chun. The shogunate soldiers hurriedly greeted him. They had never heard of the deity, but he was related to Narakami Taisha and was so powerful, so he must be a high ranking official, right? Luo Chun nodded, looked at Kujo Sarah and said, Let's go back. I think the rebels won't dare to come over in a short time. Okay. Kujo Sarah nodded. She looked at the shogunate army and said, You clean up the battlefield. One team will escort the bodies of the dead soldiers back to Inazuma Castle, and the rest of you will continue to guard Tamagashi. I will send someone to send the supplies back to you. Yes, the shogunate army said loudly. Seeing that Kujo Sarah had made arrangements, Luo Chun used golden energy to wrap Kujo Sarah up and flew into the sky, disappearing into the horizon. Lord Luo Chun, I can actually fly. Kujo Sarah suddenly whispered, I am a Tengu clan with wings, then can you keep up with my speed? Luo Chen asked. No. Kujo Sara shook her head. Flying at Luo Chen's speed, she couldn't react in a few minutes from Inazuma Castle to Tamagashi. How could she keep up? So, just follow me obediently, Luo Chen said, speeding up. After the duel in front of the emperor, Xiao Gong wanted to sneak away. She was too shy to get into Luo Chen's arms in front of so many people. Just when Xiao Gong was about to run away, someone suddenly patted her shoulder. Who? Xiao Gong was like a frightened bird. She quickly looked back and found that it was Kamisato Ayaka. Ayaka? Why are you here? Let's go. Let's not talk here first. Xiao Gong looked around and found that many people were looking at them. She pulled Kamisato Ayaka and ran out of the crowd. Master, the young lady and Xiao Gong ran away. Thomas looked at Kamisato Ayaka. Advertisement, it's okay. Xiao Gong and Ling Hua are good friends. Let them go. Originally, Shinli Lingren wanted to ask Ling Hua what happened last night. What did she talk about with Luo Chen? Since she went out with her friends, let's wait. After running to a corner with few people, Xiao Gong let go of Shinli Linghua and took a breath. Linghua, why did you suddenly look for me? Xiao Gong looked at Shinli Linghua and suddenly remembered something. Oh, Linghua, your fireworks. Xiao Gong took out the fireworks from the Eye of God, and Shinli Linghua nodded and put them into the Eye of God. Sorry, Linghua. I should have sent it to you yesterday. Xiao Gong apologized. It's okay. Shinli Linghua shook her head. Huh, what do you want to talk to me about? Xiao Gong asked. Kamisato Ayaka was silent for a moment. She mustered up the courage to ask, Xiao Gong, can I ask how you came here with Lord Luo Chin this morning? You mean this? Xiao Gong thought of the morning. Her face flushed. She explained, originally, I sent you fireworks last night, but I ran into Lord Luo Chun in the guarding forest. He told me that you drank some wine and might be resting. I thought I wouldn't bother you in this case, but because it was too late, Lord Luo Chun and his men were going to watch the imperial duel the next day. So they took me to Naragami Taisha to stay overnight. Xiao Gong said, In the morning, because Lord Luo Chun and Lord Gong seek and fly, in order to quickly get to Inazuma Castle, Lord Luo Chun carried me here. Gong. Lord Gong seek and also fly. Why didn't she carry you? Kamisato Ayaka was stunned and couldn't help but said it directly. After saying that, Kamisato Ayaka regretted it. She felt that she was really stupid now. Like a jealous woman, she was obviously angry even though she had no status. Fortunately, Xiao Gong was simple-minded. She thought Shunli Linghua just had a question. She shook her head and said, I don't know either. Anyway, I think Lord Gongsi was very strange this morning. He said a lot of inexplicable things that made me confused. And he also asked Lord Luo Chun to carry me. Lord Gong Si said what I care about? He asked me to think carefully and not hide it in my heart. Xiao Gong scratched his head and said, I don't understand what he meant. Shinli Ling Hua heard this and looked at Xiao Gong with complicated eyes. Could it be that Lord Luo Chun likes Xiao Gong like this? Oh, by the way, Ling Hua, I'm telling you, don't spread it out. Xiao Gong suddenly leaned close to Shinli Ling Hua's ear and said, Lord Luo Chun and Lord Gong Si are lovers. I just found out last night but it scared me, but they really have a good relationship. Oh, this news really exploded in Shenli Ling Hua's head like thunder. Lord Luo Chun and Lord Gong Si are lovers? Then Lord Luo Chun kissed her. What's going on? Shenli Ling Hua was in a complicated mood. She had never thought about this situation before, and the girl's mind was confused for a while. Lord Luo Chun seems to have a good relationship with the white-haired woman next to him, but Lord Gong Si doesn't care, Xiao Gong said inadvertently. But think about it. Lord Luo Chun is a god, and Lord Gong Si is also a big monster. 
They shouldn't care about these, right? By the way, Ling Hua, I still have a lot of work to do. Do you have anything else? Xiao Gong asked. No. Nothing. Shinli Ling Hua was dizzy now, shaking her head and said. Okay, then I'll go first. Next time we have time, let's go to the hot spring together. Xiao Gong waved his hand and ran away in a hurry. Chapter 34 Looking at Xiao Gong running away, Shunli Ling Hua sighed. Lord Luo Chin is really popular. Returning to Shun Li's house with a heavy heart, Shunli Ling Ran was sitting on a chair in the hall reading documents. Seeing Shunli Ling Hua coming back, he put down the documents and shouted, Ling Hua, come here, brother. What's the matter? Shunli Ling Hua came over and asked, You hosted Luo Chun for dinner yesterday. What did you say? Shunli Ling Ran asked, we talked about his relationship with the society minister. Shinli Linghua said, Brother, you don't have to worry. Lord Luo Chan said that everything will remain the same, and he will not interfere in the affairs of the society minister. He won't interfere? Shinli Ling Ren's face was happy. This is really great news. He was still having a headache about how to stabilize the current situation. Brother, please withdraw the final mission and stop monitoring a god. Kamisato Ayaka looked at Kamisato Ayane and said seriously, Lord Luo Chun is a god and a great god official. We cannot disrespect him, God. Kamisato Ayain frowned slightly when he heard Kamisato Ayain's words, but nodded without saying much. Then, Kamisato Ayain said, Ayain, drink less in the future? I know, brother. Kamisato Ayain said absent mindedly, I'm still a little tired now. I'm going to rest first. Watching Kamisato Ayain walk into her room, Kamisato Ayain knew that she didn't take his words to heart. Ayain. Since her mother passed away, the lively and lovely Ayain has disappeared. Kamisato Ayain can't remember how long he hasn't seen Ayain smile from the heart. But Thomas told him that Ayain was very happy when she was with Luo Chun yesterday, which made him feel a little relieved, but at the same time, he felt a little reluctant. Huh, my sister is grown up, I can't ask her to accompany me for the rest of her life, right? Kamisato Ayato laughed at herself, picked up the document, and continued to read. Outside the castle tower, Kujo Sarah looked at Luo Chun with a numb face. After returning to Inazuma, she took Luo Chun to visit the Tenryo Bugyo and went to Inazuma Castle. This guy bought a lot of things and she paid for them. Although this guy is a god, he is completely different from the general. The general is majestic and noble, and Luo Chun is more humane. Although he, Luo Chun said confidently that there is no Mora, so he let Kujo Sarah be his wallet. Sara, are you angry? Luo Chun asked the numb Kujo Sera. This guy is not angry about being a wallet, right? Don't say it. The Kujo Sera brand wallet is really useful. That's not the case. Judio Shala shook his head and said very straightforwardly. I just feel that Lord Luo Chun, although both are gods, you and Lord General are not the same at all. Oh. Luo Chun waved his hand and said, I understand what you mean. You want to say that the general is aloof, and I am a little bit ungodlike, right? In fact, it's normal. A general leads a country and pursues eternity. It's definitely not okay to be frivolous all day long. Luo Chan said indifferently, I don't have such a long-term goal as her. My life creed has always been to live well in the present and drink today. Even the seven gods of the world have different personalities. If you see the god of freedom, I'm afraid you will want to beat him up. Luo Chan said. Judieo Shala didn't say anything. The god of freedom is the wind god of Mond, right? Beat the wind god? How brave is Judie Oshala? Although gods are powerful, if they are high and mighty and unkind every day, they will be lonely. Luo Chun stretched and said, I don't like that boring look. Okay. Kujo Sarah nodded. He is really a casual god. Advertisement, I'm going to find the generals. Thank you for your hospitality today. Luo Chun waved his hand and walked towards the castle tower. Okay. If Lord Luo Chun still needs a wallet, please come to the Tenryo Bugio to find me or put the account in my name, and I will pay the money. Kujo Sarah nodded, and said seriously and straightforwardly. Luo Chun did not look back, but made an okay gesture and walked into the castle tower. Luo Chun was in a good mood. Well, he now has two wallets, one for Naragami Teisha and one for Kujo Sarah. He, when he walked into the castle tower, Luo Chun saw that the three of Ye Shinsi had come out. It was obvious that the general now was Ying's will. Aiken, are you back? Ye Shinsi saw Luo Chun and walked over. It's nothing. Now that I'm making a fuss, I guess the resistance will be quiet for a long time. Luo Chun embraced Ye Shinsi's slender waist and walked over, 
sitting cross-legged on the ground. Pick up a piece of cake and throw it into your mouth. Hmm. It is indeed the dessert that Ng likes. It is delicious. Luo Chun. We have discussed your god title. Lei Dianying looked at Luo Chun and said seriously. Tian Yuzhong Lord. The Great Imperial Palace. The Lord of the Country. The Great Imperial God. Exclamation point. Luo Chun nodded. Good guy. Tian Yuzhong? His title made him laugh to death. In his previous life. Wouldn't he be the ancestor of those little turtles? If you have no objection, it's decided. Lei Dianying nodded with satisfaction. She was going to plan the conferred god ceremony. Oh, by the way, Ying, god's son, Sai Palace, I plan to go to Liyue. Luo Chin suddenly looked at the three people and said, in fact, he had this idea a few days ago. For several days, he has not unlocked the template. Could it be that Inazuma was saturated in a short time? The three were stunned, and then looked at Luo Chun their eyes full of suspicion. Luo Chin held his forehead and said, What are you thinking about? I'll just go for a walk. I came to Tevat, and I also want to see the scenery along the way. With you here, Inazuma is my home. Luo Chin said seriously. Ye Shinsi was silent for a moment and nodded. Although she was reluctant, since Luo Chan wanted to see the scenery along the way, she would not stop him. If she kept Luo Chan tied to her side, he would definitely be unhappy. No. Lei Dianying said in a panic, Absolutely not. Are you going to leave? Even if Luo Chen repeatedly assured her, Lei Dianying was still very afraid that Luo Chen would leave. This was her only chance to revive her sister, and she would not allow Luo Chen to leave. Luo Chen looked at Lei Dianying. He knew what she was afraid of in her heart. He leaned over and hugged Lei Dianying in his arms. Lei Dianying's heart was already scarred. She couldn't accept Luo Chen leaving Inazuma like this. If Luo Chin really left in Azuma, she felt that she would go crazy. Lei Dianying's body stiffened at first, and then she tightly grasped the corner of Luo Chin's clothes. If this could keep Luo Chun from leaving in Azuma, she would be happy to do so. Luo Chin gently held Lei Dianying's face, looked at the somewhat dull, but at this moment, beautiful face, and kissed it gently. Chapter 35 Lei Dianying responded to Luo Chin's kiss awkwardly. She only knew that if this made Luo Chen happy, he would not leave in Azuma. After a long time, the two parted their lips. Luo Chen looked at Lei Dianying, who was slightly out of breath, and smiled. Ying, you have promised me that if resurrection is true, you will be my woman. This is your advance payment of interest to me. I will not leave in Azuma. It's just an occasional separation. Son of God, you are here. How can I leave you? Luo Chen leaned close to Lei Dianying's ear and said, I haven't tasted the taste of General Lei Dian. Lei Dianying lowered his head. Is he still going to leave? Son of God knows that my power is not complete. Saigong is not a demon god. I can easily revive her, Luo Chan said. But if she is a demon god, it is still difficult for me to perfectly revive Jun with my current power of life and death. This trip to Liyue is, on the one hand, to visit the scenery of other countries, and on the other hand, to calmly think about how to perfectly restore my power of life and death. Luo Chin lifted up Lei Dianying's little face, looked at her amethyst eyes and said, If everything goes well this time, I can directly revive Jean. Yes, Sing, Lei can go out and relax. The Eightfold God's son persuaded. Who knows, once he is in a good mood, all his abilities will be restored. If he is really resurrected, it can also speed up the process. If you ask me, Lei can go if he wants to. Li Yue is under the rule of the Rock King, a country of contract. It's good to go and experience it, Hu Zhigong also said. It's just right that we can take this time to concentrate on arranging the conferred god ceremony. Aiken was conferred as the Inazuma god. This is the most important thing. It can't be sloppy or careless, Hu Zhigong said. Well, okay then. With Luo Chen's assurance and the persuasion of her friends, Laying nodded. She also felt that it was not good to restrain Luo Chen like this. She was afraid that he would run away. Don't worry. Luo Chun thought about it, spread his palm, and four palm-sized golden diamond crystals emerged. Three of the crystals flew in front of the three people. Luo Chun said, This is the power of my space, which is directly connected to my imaginary space. With this thing as a medium, we can talk directly even if we are far away in Liyue. As he said this, Luo Chun went out to demonstrate. Hello, hello. The crystal in front of the eightfold god sun lit up, and Luo Chin's voice came out from it. God's son, can you hear my voice? Sure. The eyes of the eightfold god's son lit up. 
Interesting things are much more interesting than the amulet. Call me, Lei Dianying squeezed over and said to the crystal, expressing his dissatisfaction with him, calling the god's son directly. Okay, okay. Luo Chin's doting voice sounded, and then Lei Dianying's crystal lit up. After testing the crystal, Luo Chan walked in. How can we take the initiative to contact you with this thing? The Eightfold God's Son asked curiously. This thing is linked through my imaginary space, which is equivalent to anchor points. We can all talk to each other, Luo Chin explained. I have stored the breath of each of you in it. You just need to put your consciousness in it and choose the breath of the person you want to hit. That's really great, Ye Shinsi said with a smile. This thing is really convenient. Lei Yingying was very happy. After getting this communication Crystal Stone and Luo Chen's guarantee, she stayed for the three of them to have lunch together. Oh, Ying, you still like desserts so much. Ye Shinsi joked when he saw the many desserts on the table. Lei Dian Ying nodded. She did not refute, but looked at Hu Zhigong and said weakly, Zhigong, I want to eat the desserts you made. It's been 500 years, and I almost forgot the taste. Hu Zhigong heard that Lei Dian Ying's weak tone was a little aggrieved and nostalgic. Her eyes slightly reddened and nodded and said, Okay, wait a minute, I'll make it for you. Hundreds of years ago, before the disaster came, they had met under the cherry tree to play cards. Ng was always the loser, so she practiced hard and finally won. The winner's gift was a dessert made by Hu Zhigong himself. Hu Zhigong looked a little dazed. She still remembered the sweet smile of Ng, who was always dull. It was a pity that the old friend was gone. Advertisement Hu Zhigong looked at Lei Dian Ying with heartache. All those who didn't understand her were scolding her mistakes and irresponsibility. Little did they know how much pain she had endured. The 500 years of isolation made her indifferent and unkind, and turned a girl who once had only martial arts in her mind into a god who could support the whole country, although not competent. Hu Zhigong got up and went to Ying's kitchen. She made a dessert of the year. Soon, Hu Zhigong came over with the dessert. Lei Dianying picked up a piece, still so delicate, she put it in her mouth, tasted it gently for a long time, and it was still the taste in her memory, not changed at all. In addition to the sweetness of the dessert, Lei Dianying suddenly felt a bit of bitterness. She touched her face woodenly. It was tears. She actually cried. Since Jean passed away, since Hu Zhigong and the others disappeared from her world one by one, since she hid in the pure land of one heart, she couldn't remember how long she hadn't shed tears. Tears really taste very bitter. General Lei Dian, who seemed high and mighty to everyone, was crying in the castle tower at this moment. No one dared to think that even gods would cry. Hu Zhigong took Lei Dianying into her arms distressedly, and she gently patted her back and comforted her. It's okay. Everything will pass. Aiken has the ability to change all this. He can revive me, and naturally he will change all your regrets. It's just that you have worked hard for hundreds of years. I'm sorry to let you bear hundreds of years of pain by yourself. Hu Zhigong said softly. It's okay. It's okay. Lei Dianying's tears could no longer be stopped, and tears kept falling like pearls with broken strings. Even the thunder in the sky would cry because of the sadness of loss. Luo Chen looked at the scene in front of him and was slightly silent. Only when he really came to Inazuma could he feel how painful everything he had suffered was. Even so, she still chose to shoulder the burden and resolutely guard the country, even if she lost everything. Unlike some idiots, who shouted that they had been betrayed three times and started to kill innocent people indiscriminately, with a twisted mentality. If the suffering suffered by Ng was imposed on him, wouldn't he be cruel and slaughter the entire Inazuma? Hitting the world tree and forgetting it can be washed away? I will laugh to death. Okay. If this happens, I have already thought of how to wash it away. Vash. I have been betrayed three times, so I know that everything in the world is just a cover for deception. My anger will never subside. The first is Vinyl, my love, who broke her promise to me and passed away, leaving me alone. The second is the Court of Justice, the so-called Justice, but she didn't believe what I said and abandoned me. The third is Nevia, my niece, who betrayed me despite years of love. The Court of Justice is absolutely untrustworthy, and the people also make me hate. I give up everything, deny, and sneer at everything in the world. My chest will no longer be stained by the secular world and I will abandon the inferior emotions of mankind. Chapter 36 After eating at the castle tower, the three said goodbye to Lei Dianying and returned directly to Mingxin Taisha. Aiken, if you are going to Liyue, you might as well follow the fleet. Ye Shinsi looked at Luo Chun and said, Fleet? 
Isn't Inazuma closed to the country? Luochin asked. There is another port open off the island. According to the time, a fleet called Southern Cross should arrive in the next few days. Yeshinsi thought for a while and said, Now the sea outside Inazuma is engulfed by thunder. Although you are not afraid, there is no need to work so hard. Southern Cross fleet? Isn't that Beidou's fleet? Luo Chen rang, the woman who is known as the Uncrowned Dragon King and is rumored to be able to kill sea beasts with a mortal body. The boss of the fleet is called Beidou. I know her. I will write a letter of recommendation and she will let you board the ship and return to Liyue. Ye Shinsi said. Okay. Luo Chen nodded. Contacting more with the characters with names in the game is naturally one of the system triggering conditions. The Eightfold God and the Fox Palace were packing things for Luo Chen. It was his first time to go on a long journey. How could he not prepare well? And the Eightfold God decided to prepare a lot of delicious food for his old friends in Liyue. Time passed quickly, and two or three days passed. Luo Chun looked at the pile of things prepared by the Eightfold God and fell into deep thought. God, clothes, Mora, I know this is necessary. Then what are these Siganoderma for? Luo Chun asked, stroking his chin. This, it's for Sister Ganyu. The Eightfold God said, Aiken, doesn't your imaginary space keep fresh? This is the freshest Siganoderma. Tear off the outer leaves. The tender inner core is sweet and delicious when eaten raw, and it can also be used to make soup. The soup is delicious. Sister Ganyu is a Chilin clan. She must drink nectar and eat jaha. She doesn't eat meat. She must have been craving Siganoderma for a long time. The Eightfold God smiled. This is a letter of recommendation. You are the great god official of Mingxin Grand Shrine, with a status no lower than seven stars. You must be of the highest standard when you arrive in Liyue. We can't let them neglect you. Ye God's son pointed to an envelope and said, Okay, I understand. Luo Chen nodded and put away a lot of things. It must be said that Ye God's son really thought very comprehensively. In addition to countless sets of clothes made by Kitsusai Palace, she prepared five million mores for Luo Chen. In the words of Ye God's son, when you arrive in Liyue, you can't keep accounts at Mingxin Grand Shrine. You can't go out without money, so you directly took out five million mores. However, before leaving, Luo Chan planned to go to see Kamisato Ayaka. After all, he had kissed this girl, and he still wanted to see her thoughts and choices. Lord Luo Chan is here? In the Kamisato family's martial arts field, Kamisato Ayaka, who was practicing swordsmanship, heard Thomas's report and became anxious. She had just finished intense exercise and was sweating. It was really rude to meet Luo Chen like this. Please, please let Lord Luo Chen wait for a moment and let Linghua wash and change clothes. Shinli Linghua hurriedly ran out of the martial arts field and returned to her room to wash. Advertisement. Thomas saw that the young lady couldn't help but panic when she heard the news about Luo Chen, and he smiled bitterly and walked out. Luo Chen heard Thomas's report, nodded to show that he didn't care, and took a sip of the prepared tea. Hmm. Luo Chen's sight suddenly looked at a small house not far away. As a ruler of the void, he could feel the fluctuations of space. There was a very familiar person there. Feng Yuan Mini, who was hiding in the small house, was in a panic. He had been wanted since he stole the Eye of God from his friend. Fortunately, Kamisato Ayato took him in. Kamisato Ayato had made arrangements. When the Southern Cross fleet arrived in the next few days, he would follow the Southern Cross fleet to the sea to avoid the limelight. Unexpectedly, Luo Chan suddenly came to Kamisato's house, and Feng Yuan Mini was so scared that he hid quickly. He knew that this man had a good relationship with General Lei Dian. If he was discovered and brought to General Lei Dian, he would be dead. Moreover, the matter of the sand had spread throughout in Azuma. Feng Yuan Mini had heard of Luo Chen's divine power, and he didn't dare to confront him head on. Luo Chen originally wanted to go there, but at this time, Kamisato Ayawa came out in a hurry, and he temporarily gave up the idea. Lord Luo Chun, Shen Li Ling Hua shouted. The shrine officials had also received an order from General Lei Dian in the past few days, asking them to assist Ming Shen Tai Sha in designing the specific content of the conferred god ceremony, and the new god was Luo Chun. Ling Hua, seeing the pretty girl just finished bathing, she was as beautiful as a lotus flower emerging from the water, and her snow white hair was still dripping with water droplets. Being a little shy under Luo Chen's somewhat fiery gaze, Shunli Linghua's snow-white skin was stained with a hint of blush. The girl's feelings, the beautiful and shy girl, were very lethal to Luo Chun. Shunli Linghua dismissed everyone and looked at Luo Chun with a firm look in her eyes. Since she knew that Luo Chun was about to become the new god of Inazuma, she made a decision to confess to Luo Chen. 
Since he has become a god, gods do not have to abide by the rules of the human world, and it is not a bad thing to have a few beautiful wives, right? However, Shunli Linghua did not expect Luo Chen to take the initiative to find her today. She had already thought about looking for Luo Chen in a few days. Linghua, I plan to go to Liyue tomorrow. I thought about it and decided to tell you, Luo Chen said even though he couldn't hear the girl's voice. Ah, go to Liyue? Shunli Linghua was stunned and asked quickly. Yes, but it won't take too long. Luo Chen nodded. Okay then. Shinli Linghua lowered her head a little disappointed. Her birthday was in a few days. She was thinking about inviting Luo Chan to be her guest on that most meaningful day and then expressing her feelings to Luo Chan. Linghua, do you remember what I said to you that night? Luo Chan saw that the girl was suddenly depressed, so he decided to take the initiative and asked, These days, can you tell me your choice? Luo Chan asked seriously. Shinli Linghua was stunned for a moment. She didn't expect Luo Chen to ask about this directly. Her face flushed and she lowered her head without saying a word. After waiting for a long time, Luo Chan was a little disappointed. He said, Okay, if you haven't made up your mind, then I respect your choice. Before he finished speaking, Shunli Ling Hua raised her head. Her face was full of determination. She walked over and took the courage to hold Luo Chen's hand. Luo, Lord Luo Chan, I, I've made up my mind. Shinli Linghua was trying to suppress her inner shyness at this moment, and stammered. This was the first time in her life that she had expressed her feelings to the boy she liked. She was really nervous and not mentally prepared. But if Luo Chun went to Liyue, would she have to wait for a long time again? Chapter 37 Lord Luo Chun, I I'm a little tongue-tied now, so I may not be able to express myself well, but I want to say that I like you, I really like you. Shinli Linghua said with eyes as bright as water. I wanted to tell you later, but my heart told me that I don't want to wait any longer. Grabbing Luo Chen's hand and putting it on her warm chest, Shunli Linghua said, Actually, I don't understand. It was obviously the first time we met, and it gave me a hint of thumping. If I didn't stop it, it would want to promise you these millions of stars. I've read in light novels that someone said that love at first sight is not true, but today I really want to refute this statement. It turns out that there is love at first sight in the world. I saw the stars and the waves, and I also saw the moonlight and the sunset. But one ten thousandth of them, in my heart, is not as good as your smile. Shinli Ling Hua said what was in her heart, and even her tone became lighter. It's a bit cold. It seems that the night wind tonight is looking forward to hugging you more than I am. Please come closer to me. Don't let the night wind take advantage of you. Luo Chun didn't expect that Kamisato Ayaka could actually muster up the courage to say such touching love words. He would be a bad man if he didn't respond to the girl's feelings. He embraced the moved girl in his arms. Mmm, being embraced in his arms, Kamisato Ayaka's perfect face was full of satisfaction. He also responded to the girl's feelings. Just when Kamisato Ayaka confessed and the two hugged each other, two figures outside saw everything. Hoo hoo. Kamisato Ayaka looked at the scene in front of him. His expression was about to lose control. His cabbage was pushed by a pig. It was a magical pig. Thomas looked at Kamisato Ayato, whose back teeth were almost broken, and patted Kamisato Ayato's shoulder to comfort her. Master, don't look. The young lady and Lord Luo Chun are in love, and Lord Luo Chun is the new god. The young lady will be happy. Don't peek. Be careful that the young lady will find out and be angry with you. Thomas dragged Kamisato Ayato out. The two walked to a place not far from Kamisato's house, feeling the cold moonlight on their faces. Kamisato Ayato could no longer hold back the grief in her heart and shouted in a sad voice. No. After a long time, Luo Chun gently let go of Kamisato Ayawa. Kamisato Ayawa's eyes were as warm as water. The girl was in love for the first time, and she could throw herself into the arms of the person she loved. This was a great happiness for her. Brother Luo Chun, the girl called coquettishly and her sweet voice was like honey, which made Luo Chan feel sweet. The two hands were tightly clasped, and the two hearts were gradually getting closer, just when the atmosphere was getting hotter. Suddenly there was a clang not far away, as if something had fallen. Luo Chan turned his gaze over, and saw Kitahara Mini. He was shocked by the scene of Kamisato Ayaka's confession just now, and he knocked over a bottle in the room without paying attention. Advertisement following Luo Chen's gaze. Kamisato Ayaka's expression suddenly turned pale. She was so obsessed just now that she actually forgot that their Kamisato family was hiding a wanted criminal. If Luochin found out about this, 
wouldn't it be a big deal? Luo Chin and the general were definitely on the same side of everything he did. If he found out about Kitahara Mini, Kitahara Mini would end up being arrested, and would her relationship with Luo Chun be? Brother Luo Chun, it's probably some small thing that fell over. It's nothing. I'll ask the servants to clean it up later. I'm a little hungry. Let's go eat. Shinli Linghua held Luo Chen's hand and said with a forced smile, Okay. Luo Chen nodded and said, But before that, Linghua, wait a moment. After that, Luo Chen grabbed in the air, and there was a cry of surprise. Feng Yuan Wanya was directly grabbed out of the house by the big hand transformed by golden energy. Exclamation point. He still found it. Shinli Linghua looked at Feng Yuan Wanya, who was imprisoned, and tried to struggle to escape, and her face changed drastically. She didn't dare to imagine the consequences, but at this moment, she didn't dare to speak. Hey, isn't this the wanted criminal who stole the eye of God in front of the general? Luo Chin looked at Feng Yuan Wanya and chuckled. I was wondering why Tianling Bughang couldn't find you? It turns out that you were taken in by Shi Bughang. Since you have been discovered by your excellency, you can kill me or chop me up, whatever you want. Feng Yuan Wanya couldn't struggle free, closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Sure enough, he was still too weak in front of the gods. He is a man with backbone. Luo Chin praised. Now, let me ask you. The general killed your friend. Do you have any resentment towards the general? Hearing Luo Chin's words, Feng Yuan Wanya clenched his fists, shook his head and said, I don't know. Having just experienced the death of his friend, he didn't have time to think. Perhaps he is not so free and easy now, and still attributed the death of his friend to General Lei Dian. Ling Hua, tell me the truth. How does your Shi Bughang plan to arrange Feng Yuan Wanya? Luo Chun suddenly looked at Shinli Linghua and asked, I'm sorry, Brother Luo Chun. We? We planned to let him leave in Azuma while the Southern Cross fleet was coming. Kamisato Ayaka lowered her head. She didn't dare to lie to Luo Chen. As a community magistrate, he openly sheltered a wanted criminal. I want to ask your brother, does he know the consequences of doing so if he is discovered? Luo Chun rubbed Kamisato, Ayaka's little head, and asked in a cold tone. Fortunately, he found out. If Kujo Sarah found out and reported it to the general, the community magistrate would be removed from top to bottom, and no one would be able to escape. Kamisato Ayaka struggled every day to maintain the peace of the Kamisato family, but didn't pay attention to this? I caused this alone. Lord Luo Chun, please don't take your anger out on others. Feng Yuan Mini gritted her teeth and said, I am willing to go to the castle tower with you to confess my crime. Please let the Kamisato family go. When did I say I would punish you? Luo Chin's faint voice came. Kamisato Ayaka and Feng Yuan Mini looked at him in surprise. This is the new god of Inazuma. He doesn't care about his sins? To be honest, I personally think that the general's order to close the country is problematic. I have no reason to change her will. Luo Chun smiled faintly and explained. You are her people, and her will needs you to prove it wrong. Although human will is small, as your friend said, the will of the people gathered together, there is a possibility of defeating the will of the gods. Luo Chan said, Your friend and you are the first threshold to resist the general's will, and it also represents that human will has awakened. So, I can give you a chance. Let me see what human will can do. Luo Chan put Feng Yuan Mini down and said, Let me see if you can bring the dawn of new life to Inazuma. Thank you, Lord Luo Chan. Hearing Luo Chen's words, Feng Yuan Mini was very surprised and bowed to thank him. Chapter 38 The Southern Cross Fleet will arrive tomorrow, and I will also go to Liyue through it. You can go with me then. Luo Chen said, Hold this crystal stone. My power will allow you to escape into the imaginary space, enough to hide from the general's eyes. Luo Chen threw a crystal stone to Feng Yuan Mini and said that he would go to Liyue tomorrow, and even if Ying did not go to see him off, she would definitely stand in the castle tower to watch him. With Ying's strength, she could see through Feng Yuan Mini at a glance. If Feng Yuan Mini was not found out, it would be miserable. Thank you, Lord Luo Chen. Feng Yuan Mini looked at Luo Chen gratefully. Only this time. Luo Chen waved his hand and said, You go down. I will come here to take you away before going to the island tomorrow. Yes. Feng Yuan Mini nodded and turned to leave the room. Yes. I'm sorry, Brother Luo Chen. I shouldn't have lied to you. Shinli Linghua lowered her head and pinched the corner of her clothes, she whispered. Don't do it again. Luo Chin pinched her cheek and said, Tell me, are you in contact with the rebels? Well, Kamisato Ayaka nodded. Go and persuade the leading military advisor when you have a chance. If you don't want Haiki Island to be destroyed, 
Let them obey the rules, Luo Chen said. Okay. Kamisato Ayaka nodded. Then, Luo Chun accompanied Kamisato Ayaka for a while and returned to Ming Shintesha. Seeing Luo Chun fly away, Kamisato Ayaka and Thomas, who were waiting outside, looked at each other and said, Let's go. Kamisato Ayaka walked into the house quickly. As soon as he walked in, he saw Kamisato Ayaka sitting in the house alone. There was an extremely beautiful sapphire pendant around her neck. Ayaka. Kamisato Ayaka had never seen his sister like this before and shouted with mixed feelings. Brother. Kamisato Ayaka came back to her senses and watched Kamisato Ayaka get up and walk over. You. I heard everything just now. Kamisato Ayaka said to Kamisato Ayaka. Eh. Kamisato Ayaka was shy again. Her brother heard her confession to her lover? How embarrassing. Looking at her shy sister, Kamisato Ayaka could only sigh that her sister was already a grown-up girl and had someone she liked. Linghua, I don't object to your relationship with Lord Luo Chun. Shinli Ling sighed and said, It's just that, are you ready? Lord Luo Chun is about to become the new god of Inazuma, and his status is the most noble in the entire Inazuma. Shinli Ling said, And as far as I know, Lord Luo Chun and Lord Gong Si seem to be lovers, right? So, are you ready? Sharing a husband with other women? I, I have figured it out. Shinli Ling Hua nodded firmly and said, Brother Luo Chun is very good. I can't possess him alone. I want to serve him, and I will naturally learn to accept it. And according to the time, I should be ranked after Lord Gong Si. Even Lord Gong Si can accept it. Why can't I? Shinli Ling Hua smiled and said, As long as it's Brother Luo Chun, I can do it. Shinli Ling Ren felt so jealous. In the past, my sister only called me brother, but now she calls another man brother, and she calls him so sweetly. Kamisato Ayano seemed to have seen the terrible scene in the future where her younger sister would hug Luo Chun, then look at her coldly and say, There is no place for you in this family. Just thinking about it made her feel so sad. Huh, brother, what's wrong with you? Seeing her brother standing there in a daze, with his face constantly changing, Kamisato Ayano curiously waved her hand in front of him. Well, it's okay, Kamisato Ayano said with a fake smile on his face. He was not jealous, his own sister. Why would he be jealous? Okay then, if you are okay brother, I will go back first. Kamisato Ayano hummed a little song and left without looking back. Kamisato Ayano became sad. Woo woo woo, my good sister. Master of the family, my condolences. Thomas looked at Kamisato Ayano with pity and left too. He still had housework to do. Advertisement Thomas. Kamisato Ayato lives in Bungbu. One or two of them are like this. Damn it. Naganohara Fireworks Shop in Inazuma Castle. Shaogong. Lord Luochan is here to see you. Naganohara Ryanosuk shouted. Eh? Luochan is here? Shaogong heard the words and quickly stood up to greet him. Luochan pushed open the door and saw Shaogong, who looked like a little cat, and burst out laughing. What? What's wrong? Xiao Gong stared at Luo Chen blankly and laughed. It's okay. Xiao Gong, there are flowers on your face. Luo Chen held back his laughter and said. Ah, I forgot to wash my face. Wait a minute. Xiao Gong jumped up. It must be gunpowder on her face. She quickly ran into the inner room to wash her face. She is exposed to fireworks every day, and her skin can still be so good. She is really a natural beauty. Luo Chen sighed, and then saw Xiao Gong came out. Her face was white and tender after washing. Luo Chun, what do you want to see me for? Xiao Gong asked curiously. If there is nothing, can I see you? Luo Chun joked. No, it's just that you haven't seen me for several days. I was afraid that you had something to do and I didn't bother you. Xiao Gong scratched his head and said. I will leave for a while tomorrow and go to Li Yue. I came to say goodbye to you. Luo Chun said. Huh, you are going to Li Yue? Xiao Gong widened his eyes. So sudden. Yes. Luo Chen nodded and said. Okay. Xiao Gong nodded and whispered. Then are you going for a long time? No, just for a short time. After all, Inazuma is home. Luo Chen shook his head and said. Yeah. Xiao Gong nodded and said. I also want to go to Liyue. Unfortunately, I have a lot of orders to do recently. It doesn't matter. I will take you to Liyue when I am free in the future. Luo Chen comforted. Okay. Xiao Gong said and then began to rummage through the boxes. Soon, Xiao Gong took out a sachet and ran to Luo Chun to put it on his waist. What is this? Luo Chun asked curiously, looking at the exquisite sachet. Hee hee, this is the pea sachet I made. 
It means safe journey. Although your strength may not be able to use it, but it is also a good wish. Xiao Gong said a little embarrassedly. Luo Chun was stunned. He looked at Xiao Gong's soft face and didn't understand what Xiao Gong meant. Could it be that she really liked him like the Son of God said? Not like the friendship she had for others? Why? What's wrong? Doesn't it look good? Xiao Gong saw that Luo Chun didn't speak, thinking that he was dissatisfied. No, I like it very much. Luo Chun shook his head. He planned to wait until he came back from Inazuma to test whether Xiao Gong had friendship or love for him. He just liked Xiao Gong, this gentle and enthusiastic girl. He felt that he was a little hypocritical these days. Obviously, a girl like Xiao Gong would care more about her boyfriend's thoughts, and she would not do things that would make her boyfriend unhappy. Chapter 39 The next morning, Luo Chun opened his eyes and found that the Eightfold Godson was no longer beside him. Stretching, Luo Chun walked out and saw that the Eightfold Godson and Hu Zhigong were already sitting outside chatting. Are you awake? Hu Zhigong smiled and said, I'll go to Liyue with you later. Oh? Luo Chun looked at Hu Zhigong. Is it so sudden? I haven't heard that she said she was going before. I have a 500-year blank in Teyvat, and I also want to see what Liyue has become now. Hu Zhigong said, Is the god's son willing to let you out? Luo Chun asked with a smile. You know, since Hu Zhigong was resurrected, the eightfold god's son has been dragging her to deal with the affairs of the shrine. Well, I paid a lot of price for her to agree. Hu Zhigong nodded and glared at the eightfold god's son. Don't worry, Aiken. I won't disturb you, Hu Zhigong said with a smile, and then his figure disappeared and turned into a white-haired fox. It shouldn't bother you like this, right? Hu Zhigong jumped onto Luo Chen's shoulder and climbed down. Of course not. Luo Chun shook his head, his eyes shining. He really liked the fox forms of the Son of God and Hu Zhigong. They were super cute, and it was really comfortable to stroke them. The Son of God's hair was pink, while Hu Zhigong's was pure white, with no stray hair on his body which made him look very noble. Pulling Hu Zhigong off his shoulders and holding him in his arms, Luo Chan gently stroked Hu Zhigong's body. The smooth and thick hair felt really comfortable to touch. Hulu. Obviously, Hu Zhigong also enjoyed Luo Chen's touch, making a comfortable snoring sound, twisting his body and posing in a comfortable position. Oh, it's really a bargain for you. Lord Zhigong, you have to take good care of Ah Chan, the eightfold son of God joked. You have to do what we said, otherwise. Hoo hoo. No problem. No problem. Hu Zhigong waved his little paw and said, Let's go. Let's get ready to go. Luo Chun said, Before that, let's go to Kamisato's house. I'm going to take Kitihara Mini away. Okay. Soon, the two people and the fox arrived at Kamisato's house. At this time, Kitihara Mini was also ready. He changed into the clothes of a community official, and his face was also modified by Thomas. Lord Luo Chun. Lord Palace Master. Seeing the arrival of Luo Chen and Ye Shinsi, Kitahara Mini hurriedly greeted them, and Kamisato Ayaka looked at Luo Chan gently. Yeah, Luo Chen nodded. Kitahara boy, Aiken taking you out is also against the general. I hope you can do what you said before. Ye Shinsi said to Kitahara Mini, and then walked in front of Kamisato Ayaka. Ye Shinsi already knew that Kamisato Ayaka was Luo Chen's lover. Luo Chan told her, and it was Kamisato Ayaka who confessed first. Ye Shinsi didn't expect that this little girl looked so weak, but she had such courage. Palace, palace master. Looking at Ye Shinsi, Kamisato Ayaka felt a little lack of confidence, just like a mistress seeing the main wife. Why call me palace master? Call me sister. Ye Shinsi lifted Kamisato Ayaka's chin and teased. Sister, sister. Kamisato Ayaka was very shy, but this meant that Ye Shinsi had accepted her. Little girl is very courageous. If you have nothing to do today, come to Naragami Teisha to accompany your sister. Sister has something to tell you. After saying this, Ye Shinsi stopped teasing Kamisato Ayaka. Ayaka, then we will leave first, Luo Chen said. Brother Luo Chun. Kamisato Ayaka hurried over and whispered. Be careful on the road. I will wait for you to come back at Inazuma. Okay. Luo Chen nodded and gently hugged Kamisato Ayaka. In Kamisato Ayaka's reluctant eyes, Luo Chun and others rushed to the island. Advertisement next to the island. A huge fleet anchored on the shore. A large group of people were moving goods, and a beautiful woman with a blindfold was communicating with people. Seeing a few people, Beidou hurried over. Are you here? Beidou knew that there was a distinguished guest on the ship today, the great god officer of Ming Shintesha. TSK TSK TSK, 
That is a high-ranking official at the same level as Qixing. Please wait a moment. We will transport the goods down and we can set off after replenishing the supplies. Beidu said. Hello, Captain Beidu. My name is Luo Chun. I'm sorry to bother you all the way. Luo Chun stretched out his hand and said. Hello, Lord Luo Chun. Just call me Beidu, no trouble. Beidu stretched out his hand and shook hands with Luo Chun. Is this the great god officer of Mingxin Taisha? He is really young. Just as everyone was greeting, thunder exploded in the sky, and a flash of lightning instantly appeared in the port. The lightning dissipated, and everyone found that it was General Lei Dian. General! All the Inazuma people quickly saluted. This is their god. General Thunder. Beidu was shocked. This is the highest god of Inazuma, the most noble and extraordinary person in the whole Teyvat, and he is as famous as the Rock King. Yeah. Ching Lung nodded in response to everyone. Lei Yingying walked over and looked at Luo Chun and said, Be careful on the road. Okay. Luo Chun nodded and said, Don't you know my strength yet? That's the best. You are one of Inazuma's masters. You don't need to be wronged outside. Lei Yingying said, If you are wronged, you can kill him with a knife without considering the consequences. In terms of fighting, Shi Lei Yingying has never been weak to anyone, even the oldest and most powerful Rock King. Lei Yingying asked herself that she might not be able to defeat the Rock King, but she would definitely not lose easily. Don't worry. Luo Chen nodded. He is the one who was wronged? The Rock King is the oldest god. As long as Luo Chun does not do anything to hurt Li Yue, he will naturally not embarrass Luo Chen at will. Besides, isn't the Rock King planning to fake his death and retire recently? He won't care so much. Lei Dianying nodded. She looked at the white fox in Luo Chen's arms and said, With her with you, you don't have to worry about life. Hu Zhigong is already proficient in all kinds of things, especially in life. She is absolutely a good wife and mother, and she used to take care of them. Come back as soon as possible. Don't let me wait too long. Lei Dianying said, without a trace of hesitation, turned into lightning and returned to the castle tower. Luo Chen naturally knew what Lei Dianying meant, but Beidu and Feng Yuan Mini next to him showed extremely shocked eyes. Could it be that General Lei Dian had an unusual relationship with Luo Chen? Beidu was even more shocked. What kind of existence is this man? How charming is he? Can General Lei Dian say that? Well, Beidu admitted that Luo Chun is indeed very charming, the most charming person she has ever seen. She also has many suitors, including rich young masters from Li Yue, but no matter what, Beidu feels that she can't compare with Luo Chun. The National Closure Order and the Eye Hunting Order are also wrong choices, but the protagonist is now a high-ranking official of the country, the great god prayer of Mingjin Taisha, and will soon become the new god of Inazuma. Is it possible to directly help the rebels? Besides, who said that General Raiden did not give Haiki Island asylum? As the defeated party, they were not allowed to roll back to Yuanxia Palace, but allowed to continue to survive on the territory of Inazuma. This is asylum. What? Not believing in Mingjin, but giving them preferential policies is called asylum. 3. Some people say that General Raiden only lost a few friends. Which of Raiden Makoto? Kitsusagumi, Sasi Yuri, and Mikashi Chio didn't die in order to protect Inazuma. 4. Why are people so angry? Everyone has their own views. If you feel that the author's writing is unreasonable or you have different ideas, we can discuss it calmly in the comment area instead of speaking foul language directly. Chapter 40. Luo Chen. We have already replenished the supplies and can set off at any time? Beidu walked over and said, Okay, let's set off. Luo Chen nodded and looked at the Eightfold Godson. Remember to contact us more often. The Eightfold Godson straightened Luo Chen's collar and said, Okay. Luo Chen hugged the Eightfold Godson and said, I will bring you Liyue specialties when I come back. After that, Luo Chen hugged Hu Zhigong and turned around and boarded the Death Star. With the shouts of the sailors, the Southern Cross fleet slowly sailed away from the shore and plunged into the vast ocean. Luo Chen, we will be sailing on the sea for a long time. You can stay in this room first. The conditions on the sea are not good. Please forgive me. Beidu took Luo Chun to his room. It doesn't matter. I don't care about these. Luo Chun hugged Hu Zhigong and shook his head and said, Captain Beidu, don't be so polite. Aren't we friends? Ha ha ha. Hearing Luo Chen's words, Beidu was stunned, laughed and nodded and said, Yes, we are friends. You can just call me Beidu. I'm going to go fishing. Do you want to join me? Beidu invited. Okay. Luo Chen nodded. He had never fished before and said, I have never fished before. I still need you to teach me. No problem. Beidu would naturally not refuse such a small thing. She patted her broad chest and said, 
Leave it to me. Soon, half a day passed. Beidou looked at Luo Chun with a numb face. Isn't this guy a novice? Why does he always catch fish, while he, a veteran, is an air force? Why why? Could this be the legendary novice protection period? Ding, it is detected that the master has defeated Beidou in fishing for the first time. Unlock the item. Magic kitchen. The kitchen has all the kitchen utensils. Putting in ingredients can automatically make various delicacies. The food maid has a chance to obtain special effects. Luo Chun saw a golden bracelet appear on his hand. Is this the legendary magic kitchen? At the same time, instructions for use appeared in Luo Chen's mind. 6. Luo Chen looked at the instructions. This is definitely a must have artifact for home travel. It seems that we will have a good meal at noon. Looking at the fish in a large fish basket, Luo Chun said with satisfaction. So many fish are enough for the entire Death Star. Zhaigong, do you want to eat grilled fish or stewed fish? Luo Chun hooked the chin of the little fox in his arms and asked. Grilled fish. Fox Shigong's eyes lit up and his saliva almost flowed down. Okay. Luo Chen nodded and said, Hmm? You little fox can talk? Beidou stared at Hu Shigong in Luo Chen's arms with eyes wide open and asked, I've heard that there are many demons among the wives of an Azuma. Could this little fox be a demon? She is just a little hand warmer of mine. Luo Chen stroked Hu Shigong's soft fur and smiled. Obviously, Hu Shigong was not happy to hear this. She jumped up and slapped Luo Chin's forehead with her meat pads. She didn't use any force, it was soft and comfortable. Good boy, Luo Chun pulled Hu Zhaigong down and buried his face in her belly. He didn't care about Hu Zhaigong's shy struggle at all. Hu Zhaigong's body was fragrant, warm, and soft, which really made people love it. After a long time, Luo Chun let go of Hu Zhaigong. Her hair was almost pink with shame, and she collapsed in Luo Chin's arms with no desire to live. Advertisement woo woo woo. This hateful stinky man. She is not clean. It is very convenient to have a magic kitchen. You can just throw the fish into the kitchen, clean it, slaughter it, and cook it all in one go. Brothers, it's time to eat. Beidou shouted to the sailors. In addition to the meal, you can try the fish made by Luo Chun. The magic kitchen makes fish soup, stewed fish, and grilled fish. Wow. Picking up a grilled fish and taking a bite. A sailor's eyes lit up. As a sailor who drifts on the sea every day, he has long been tired of eating fish, but the fish made by Luo Chun is so delicious. It's so delicious. This is the first time I've eaten such delicious fish. Yes, Lord Luo Chin's grilled fish skills are better than Wamen Hall. The sailor's praises are everywhere. Beidou raised his eyebrows and said, Is it so outrageous? Big sister, just try it. We really think this grilled fish is really unique. A sailor said, Then I'll try it. Half believing and half dough, Beidou picked up the grilled fish and put it in his mouth, then nodded. Yeah, it's delicious. That's fine. Luo Chan nodded with satisfaction. The magic kitchen is really good. A must-have for lazy dogs. Fortunately, he is a lazy dog. Picked up a piece of grilled fish and put it to Hu Zhaigong's mouth. Hu Zhaigong had been greedy for a long time. It's normal for foxes to love fish, and she is now in the form of a fox, so she doesn't need to pretend. Hu Zhaigong was not polite and took the grilled fish and ate it heartily. The scenery on the sea is very attractive to people who have never been to the sea at first, but after a long time, this unchanging scenery is meaningless. Luo Chen hugged Hu Zhaigong and sat on the bow. He looked at the ocean not far away. It had become dark under the night. I don't know what he was thinking about, and Hu Zhaigong was sleeping soundly in his arms. Hey, Luo Chen, what are you thinking about here? Beidu's voice came from behind and then a figure sat next to Luo Chun. After casually installing a silent barrier for the Huzhai Palace, Luo Chun looked at Beidou beside him. She sat in a very unrestrained posture, with one eye covered by a black cloth and the other wine-red eye staring at the distant sea. Nothing. I was thinking about Inazuma, Luo Chun said, but Beidou, it's not easy to support such a large fleet, right? Nothing. Beidou shook her head and said, there is no difficulty in the world. Only things you like and don't like. I like the sea. I wanted to conquer this ocean when I was very young. Beidou said. So I chose to embark on this path. Fortunately, there are no winds and waves that can knock me down. I have heard that Beidou once killed sea beasts and sea mountains with her mortal body. Luo Chen nodded and said. It is really amazing. If it is ordinary through people, I am afraid that when you see Haishin, you can walk softly. Harm, Beidou waved his hand and said. People come up and it is a bit of God. I am just a mortal. 
I have no battle for the brothers of the fleet. Beidou picked up the jug and took a sip, only in the ocean. Luo Chan looked at Beidou. Beidou laughed. She felt that Luo Chan was very interesting and frank. Men pursue a beauty, isn't this true? Who doesn't like it? Chapter 41 Hey Luo Chen. The two looked at the scenery for a while, and Beidou suddenly bumped into Luo Chen's shoulder and asked, Can you tell me what your relationship with General Lei Dian is? If it's not suitable, you don't have to tell me. Don't worry, I will keep it a secret for you. It's nothing, Luo Chun said. She is my prospective woman. Awesome. Beidou gave Luo Chun a thumbs up and said with some admiration, as a mortal, you can actually get General Lei Dian. Luo Chun, you are a role model for men. Luo Chun smiled and said nothing. He didn't say that he was a mortal, and how could the general understand love? He had to rely on him to cultivate? She was obviously a queen, but there was always a feeling of cultivation. Rest early. You may feel a little seasick when you come to the sea for the first time. Beidou patted Luo Chun and stood up and said, If you get seasick, there are some sour dried raspberries in the drawer of the table in the room. Eat some. Sour things can make seasickness feel better. Okay. Luo Chun nodded and took Hu Zhigong back. To be honest, sailing on the sea is not stable, and sleeping naturally won't be very peaceful. But at least there is Hu Zhai Palace. Every night she turns into a big fox and takes Luo Chun into her arms. In her arms, he will feel very stable, warm, and fragrant, and very comfortable. Time passed quickly, and it was already a week later. At midnight, Luo Chun was sleeping soundly, and suddenly a violent tremor woke him up. Lying in the arms of the big fox that Hu Zhai Palace turned into, he was very stable, and the vibration caused by ordinary wind and waves could not wake him up at all. There was a lot of noise outside, and I don't know what they were yelling. What's wrong? Hu Zhai Palace turned into a little fox and hid in Luo Chen's arms. She was not afraid. As a god, Luo Chen's combat power was enough to look down on General Lei Dian. Even if the demon god came, he would be killed instantly. Go out and take a look. Luo Chen walked out. It was raining heavily outside at this time. The waves were higher than the Death Star. The whole fleet was floating, as if it would sink into the sea in the next moment. A faint golden shield emerged, protecting Luo Chen and Hu Zhai Gong blocking the raindrops as big as beans. What happened? Luo Chan saw Beidou holding the pillar in front of him and walked up to ask. At this moment, she was already soaked by the rain. We don't know either. Suddenly there was a heavy rain and a tsunami. Beidou shook her head. She had a bad premonition in her heart, and her premonition of the ocean was always accurate. Huh. The spatial force released by Luo Chan directly sensed that there was a huge sea dragon hovering not far from the fleet. It was its movement that made this area of the ocean uneasy. There is a sea beast in the sea, and it is the culprit. Luo Chan said to Beidou, It looks like its target is your fleet. What? Beidou's mind sank. If what Luo Chan said was true, she would really be annoyed. This time, her ship was loaded with a lot of valuable items purchased for Ningguang, many of which were very fragile, so she couldn't fight. Even if she could defeat the so-called sea beast, once all these valuable items were destroyed, she couldn't afford to sell them. Everyone, open the sails with all your strength. Get out of this area quickly, Beidou shouted. It's too late. Luo Chin waved his hand, and the next moment, a huge figure emerged from the sea. Roar. The huge roar raised huge waves, and everyone stared at the behemoth in front of them in a daze. It's a sea beast, the sailors shouted, all looking at Beidou. Beidou gritted her teeth. She was not afraid of this beast, but, advertisement, big sister Beidou, I'll help you. Feng Yuan Wanya drew his sword and stood beside Beidou. On this ship, only he and Beidou had the eye of God. Damn it. The big sword appeared in his hand. Beidou glared at the sea dragon. He couldn't run away anymore. He could only fight it. This damn thing. She was going to lose everything on this trip. She could already foresee Ningguang's ridicule, and she couldn't help but burst into anger. Powerful lightning penetrated her body. She dared to challenge Haishin without the eye of God. She had to cut this beast into eight pieces. Protect your goods. Leave this little loach to me. Luo Chen suddenly stopped Beidou and said, You? But you don't even have the eye of God. Beidou shook her head. She thought Luo Chen was just an ordinary person who was in a high position but had no power. Eye of God. Luo Chen sneered, stroked the little fox in his arms, and took a step. In the shocked eyes of everyone, it was as if there were steps under his feet, and he slowly stepped into the sky. Luo Chen's figure looked very small in front of the huge sea beast, but for some reason, 
Everyone felt relieved when they saw this figure. Big Sister Beidou, don't worry, there will be no danger if this lord takes action. Seeing Luo Chun take action, Feng Yuan Wanya breathed a sigh of relief. Lord Luo Chun is a god. What's a mere sea beast? Feng Yuan Wanya said, shocking Beidou. He is a god as powerful as the general. God. God. Beidou looked at the figure in the sky woodenly. This easygoing and handsome young man was actually a god, without a trace of the god's heirs. Yes, how could a mortal win the favor of General Lei Dian? How could a mortal let the white fox, a monster, lie in his arms obediently and let Luo Chun touch it? Luo Chun looked at the sea beast in front of him. He had to say that the sea beasts in this world were quite handsome. The sea dragon actually had a dragon head and a snake body. It was two or three hundred meters long, an absolute behemoth. However, Luo Chun now witnessed this sea beast, and only then did he understand the value of Beidu's killing of Haishan. Ah, the sea dragon looked at the little one in front of it. It didn't understand how such a small ant dared to be in front of it. Driving the huge waves, it tried to swallow Luo Chin with the huge waves. Unfortunately, Luo Chin only took a look, and the huge waves hundreds of meters high were inexplicably stilled in the air. With a light squeeze of his hands, the waves turned into raindrops all over the sky and scattered directly. Luo Chun did not intend to use the power of the Hershers. A mere sea beast, not even a demon god, was not worthy of the judgment of the Hershers. He wanted to test his physical strength. Taking the next step, Luo Chun went directly to the face of the sea beast and threw a heavy uppercut, hitting the sea beast's chin directly. Bang! A dull sound sounded and the huge sea beast's body was directly smashed out of the sea by Luo Chen's punch, and was directly smashed hundreds of meters high. The blood rained down from the sky, staining a large area of the ocean. Luo Chen smashed the head of the sea beast with just one punch, and the headless snake body was still unconsciously flipping in the air. Hey Ah Chun, you are so bloody. Hu Zhigong, who was lying on Luo Chen's shoulder, looked at Shui Wu with disdain. Although Luo Chen's power protected her from getting bloodstained, the clean little white fox still didn't like the scene of blood rain all over the sky. Just testing the power, Luo Chen grabbed Hu Zhigong and sniffed her fiercely. Chapter 42 Luo Chen was holding a sea dragon. The meat of sea beasts should be delicious, right? The sailors stared blankly at Luo Chen, who had killed the sea beast with one punch. He had already come to the sky above the Death Star with the sea dragon. Beidu, can this sea dragon be eaten? Luo Chun asked Beidou. Beidou was speechless. Everyone would be scared to death when seeing a sea beast of this level, but he actually wanted to eat it. Sea dragons are generally not poisonous and can be eaten. Beidou nodded. She had never eaten it either, but she had read a book about the ocean, and all sea dragons were non toxic. That's good. Luo Chun nodded, and a sharp golden light flashed in the void, directly dividing the huge sea dragon into many sections, and then flew to each ship. Putting the best sea dragon meat he had left into the imaginary space, Luo Chun slowly landed from the air. What's wrong? Luo Chun asked strangely when he saw Beidou's complicated eyes. I didn't expect you to be a god? Beidou said with mixed feelings. Do you still care about these? Luo Chun smiled and said, Beidou should not be a person who is afraid of such a small matter, right? Of course not. Beidou shook her head. Luo Chun is a god. So what? He is not the king of rock. She can still be friends with him. That's it. Luo Chen yawned and said, Since there is nothing else, I will go back to rest first. Beidou, go take a bath and don't get sick. After that, Luo Chen waved his hand and walked into his little room. Don't look at it. Looking at the curious people, Beidou shouted loudly. Everyone, except those on duty, rest quickly, and you have to take turns in the morning. Beidou has spoken. So naturally they are very obedient and quickly put away their curiosity and go back to rest. In Luo Chen's room, Zhigong, you are going to turn into a big fox. Let me bury you. Looking at Hu Zhigong, Luo Chen shook her. Stupid. Hu Zhigong glared at Luo Chen, and then a white light passed by, and Hu Zhigong, who was in human form, looked at Luo Chen coquettishly. Luo Chen looked at the beauty in front of him and was speechless for a moment. In fact, it was comfortable to hug a fox when sleeping at night. How about? Zhigong, you change back? Luo Chun asked tentatively. You are a stinky man who doesn't understand romance. You bury me. Hu Zhigong rolled his eyes at Luo Chun and pressed his head directly into his arms. In an instant, the warm feeling wrapped him up. 
the milky white snow almost suffocated Luo Chun, and the fragrant smell lingered in Luo Chen's nose. Please give me more rewards like this. Bury me to death. Luo Chen shouted in his heart, My God, who doesn't like this? I am happy to bury myself to death. The second half of the night seemed very calm. Under Hu Zhigong's facial cleanser, Luo Chun rarely stayed in bed until noon the next day, and he got up reluctantly. Hu Zhigong did not turn into a little fox today, but wore a white long dress, which was very beautiful. Her face flushed, she glared at Luo Chun, and there was a wet feeling on her full chest, which made her feel a little uncomfortable. Big pervert, how can you be so bad? Hu Zhigong said angrily. Thank you for the compliment. Luo Chin nodded with a wicked smile. You came to me yourself, I have to taste it well? Although this environment is not good and I can't do many things, I have done everything I can. Advertisement, humph. Hu Zhigong rolled his eyes and walked out of the room holding Luo Chen's arm. It was dinner time. Beidu and the sailors on the deck were grilling the sea dragon meat that Luo Chun gave them yesterday. The rich aroma of meat filled the air. Luo Chun, come on. This sea dragon meat is edible, and it smells very good. Beidu saw Luo Chun coming out and quickly waved to Luo Chun to come over. Who is this? Oh, Luo Chun, and Hu Zhigong walked over. Beidu looked at the white haired beauty beside Luo Chun, saw her fox ears and the fox tail behind her, and suddenly realized me and smiled a little. Hu Zhigong's transformation is different from the Son of God. She doesn't like to put away her tail. She thinks it's too restrictive and not comfortable at all. Luo Chin didn't care about Beidu's joke at all. He pulled two benches, gave one to Hu Zhigong, and sat down himself. Here, Beidu handed Luo Chin a large piece of meat and then handed a piece to Hu Zhigong. Hmm, it's really delicious. Luo Chin took a bite. It's worthy of being a sea beast, right? The meat is firm and the taste is very good. The key is that the taste is extremely delicious, more delicious than all the meat Luo Chun has eaten. This sea dragon has a high level of cultivation, and every part of its body has been washed by elemental power. Hu Zhigong nodded with satisfaction and said, So the meat is really good. Thanks to you. We can eat this sea dragon meat. Beidu smiled. It's really cool to eat meat and drink wine. Luo Chin also wants a big bowl and fill it with wine. This feeling of freedom is really comfortable. Didn't you eat the sea mountain you killed before? Luo Chin took a sip of wine and asked in confusion. No, its body was bought by someone. Beidu shook his head and said, at that time, the fleet was severely damaged, and we could only sell the sea mountain to make up for the loss of the fleet. Luo Chin nodded and asked, how long will it take us to Liyue? At least more than a week. Beidu calculated the time and almost walked half the distance. Luo Chin nodded and said, before coming to Liyue, I heard that in addition to the Rock King, there are seven stars in Liyue who manage the daily affairs of Liyue. Beidu, can you tell me about the seven stars in Liyue? Of course. Beidu nodded. This is not a secret, so she can tell it. Besides, she is just a captain and doesn't know much. The days at sea are very boring. Luo Chan is either fishing or playing the seven saints summoning with Beidu and others these days. At night, Hu Zhigong is not lonely. Luo Chan, we are almost there. One day, Beidu suddenly found Luo Chan who was fishing and said, Oh, almost there? Luo Chan became interested. Since the protection period for fishing novices has passed, he has been empty-handed, which is really annoying. There is still an hour. I just met some fishermen. Beidu nodded and said, Hmm, are we almost there? Hu Zhigong, who was lying on Luo Chin's head in the form of a little fox and basking in the sun, stretched and slowly got up. Finally, the boring days at sea are about to end. Luo Chun put away his fishing rod and looked in the direction of the boat. With his eyesight, he could see the distant Liyue port directly. Unlike the game, the real Liyue port is extremely prosperous and huge, with crowds of people working in it. It has to be admitted that the gap between Inazuma's economy and Liyue's is not big. The outlying island is also a very large island, but due to the closed-door policy and insufficient economic strength, the port is extremely shabby compared to Liyue port. Chapter 43. Soon, the Death Star slowly sailed into the Liyue port. Beidu, let's say goodbye here. Luo Chan came over and said to Beidu, I plan to visit the city of Liyue by myself. Okay. Beidu nodded. She still had a lot of goods to hand over, so naturally she didn't have time to entertain Luo Chan. When I'm free, I'll treat you to a drink. Beidu said. Okay. Luo Chan nodded, turned around and left with Hu Zhigong. He now has a huge sum of 500 W Mora, and he can live a comfortable life in Liyue Port. 
Just after getting off the Death Star, Luo Chen looked at the crowded Liyue Harbor and couldn't help but sigh. Zhai Gong, look at the development of Liyue. If Ying saw it, wouldn't she be envious and cry? The god of Liyue is respected as the Rock King Emperor. I heard His Highness Zhan mention him. Hu Zhai Gong nodded and said, His Highness Zhan's evaluation of the Rock King Emperor is that he is a great god worthy of learning from both civil and military affairs. Now looking at the development of Liyue, his thoughts are indeed very correct. Liyue is indeed one of the most luxurious countries. Even the birthplace of Mora is in Liyue. Hu Zhaigong agreed and said, I have to admit that Morix is a god worthy of respect. With him supporting Liyue for thousands of years, the demons dare not invade, and the people live and work in peace and contentment. Ying should really learn from him. I don't agree. Suddenly, a thunderous voice sounded behind Luo Chun, and Luo Chun looked back. A black silk girl with a purple cat head came over with dissatisfaction. She looked at the talking little white fox in Luo Chen's arms with some surprise and said, Are you foreign travelers? We are from Inazuma. Luo Chun said, It was Kaching? It seems that she is working at the dock again. Sure enough, do you think that the most important thing to support a country is the gods? It is definitely not the emperor who has supported Li Yue for thousands of years. Kaching said, the reason why Li Yue can achieve its current achievements is not inseparable from the emperor, but the hard work of the people of Li Yue, which has created it bit by bit. The emperor has led Li Yue for thousands of years, but what about the next thousand years? What about the next thousand years? Can the emperor always guide mankind forward? Kaching said seriously. Besides, does the emperor know everything? Hu Zhaigong looked at the girl in front of her in surprise. She didn't expect that in a country ruled by gods like Li Yue, someone would dare to disrespect the gods so much? Say such treasonous words? Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Kaching introduced herself. I am Kaching. You hung among the seven stars of Liyue. This time, Hu Zhaigong was even more shocked. This is a high-ranking official in Liyue, one of the highest-ranking people in the entire Liyue harbor. How could she be so disrespectful to the gods? Little girl, you question Morix, but do you know how important the existence of a god is to a country? Hu Zhaigong looked at Kaching and said, Human lifespan is only a short hundred years. The life of a mortal is only a moment in the history of a country. With God's rule, why worry about it? You have the same idea as those lazy and cowardly people. Kaching snorted coldly. You are denying the existence of the entire human race. If people all think this way and deny themselves, why should they be loved by God? Advertisement, things related to the fate of mankind, should be left to humans themselves. Kaching said seriously, and humans can definitely do better. Really? Hu Zhaigong disagreed with this attitude. She herself was born in the era of God's rule. She did not deny the existence of mankind, but believed that God was important to the country. Little girl, let me ask you. If there is an invasion of demons, do you have the ability to resist? Just relying on human power? Hu Zhaigong asked back. Kaching choked for a moment. She had thought about this question, but she was not confident. We have a complete military system and a disciplined army. It should be. Kaching gritted her teeth and said, Should? I can tell you seriously that no matter how powerful an army is, it is vulnerable in front of the gods. Hu Zhaigong interrupted Kaching's words. The seven gods suppressed many demons in the past, so that ordinary people could have a place to live. The existence of gods is the most powerful protection for this country. Kaching, the existence of gods is very important to this country. Luo Chan said, Not having a sword and having a sword but not using it are two different things. Exclamation point. Kaching looked at the handsome young man and was silent for a long time. She asked, What's your name? My name is Luo Chun. Luo Chun said, Who is this? Kaching looked at the little white fox in Luo Chen's arms. Just call her Hu Zhaigong. Luo Chan stroked Hu Zhaigong's back and said. Kaching nodded and said, This is your first time in Liyue. I'll take you around. No trouble for you? Luo Chen asked. I just finished my work. The weather is good today. I was planning to take a walk. Kaching shook her head and said. Hearing Kaching say this, Luo Chen nodded. He was unfamiliar with Liyue, and with Kaching leading him, he could also get a general understanding of Liyue. Accompanied by Kaching, the two of them traveled around half of Liyue in the afternoon. The real Liyue city is really too big. It's getting late, Luo Chan. Let's have a meal together. Kaching and Luo Chan traveled around for an afternoon, and the two became friends, so she invited him. Okay, I've heard about all kinds of delicacies in Liyue for a long time, so of course I'll enjoy it. 
Luo Chen nodded. Kiching treated Luo Chan to a meal, so she naturally took Luo Chen to Xinyuexuan, which is the most authentic moon dish in Liyue. After entering the private room, Hu Zhaigong jumped out of Luo Chen's arms. A white light flashed, and she turned into a human form. Looking at this woman who turned into a human, Kaching was stunned. Not only could she speak human language, but she could also turn into a human. Could she be an immortal? Zhaigong is a big monster of Inazuma, and should be similar to the immortals in your Liyue. Luo Chen explained. Kaching was dumbfounded. She admired Luo Chen very much. A big monster who was as famous as an immortal could be in your arms like a little pet? Miss Hu Zhaigong, you and Luo Chen? Kaching asked curiously. I'm his lover, Hu Zhaigong said. Huh. Kaching was even more surprised. Can mortals also fall in love with big monsters? This news was like she heard that a mortal and an immortal were in love. Kaching, what's the look in your eyes? Luo Chen looked at Kaching, who was looking at her up and down. Her little eyes seemed a little hard to describe. Sorry, I'm rude. Kaching quickly retracted her eyes. Luo Chen was taller, more handsome, and looked more luxurious and rich. What else was there? Can he attract a big monster to be his girlfriend? Chapter 44 If Luo Chen heard Kaching's inner voice, he would really put her on his legs and spank her hard. Isn't it enough that he is tall, rich, and handsome? I have to say that Kaching is indeed a rich lady. The sumptuous dishes in front of her must be taken without tens of thousands of mora. Kaching, I heard that you Liyue has a fairy ceremony, right? Luo Chen suddenly asked. Yes, and it's almost there. There's still a week left. Kaching nodded and said, holding the golden shrimp ball. This time, the fairy ceremony will be hosted by Tai and Kuangxing Ningguang. Do you want to come and see it then? One week. Luo Chen nodded and said, Okay. There is still a week before the fairy ceremony. It seems that Zhongli's retirement plan is about to start. He will see the traveler soon. I really want to see if it is Kong or Ing. Kaching, do you like golden shrimp balls? Luo Chen looked at Kaching who was eating golden shrimp balls and asked knowingly, Eh, did you find out? Kaching nodded and said, Even if you only eat one golden shrimp ball, it can satisfy your taste buds and clear away all the pressure. The meal ended quickly. After paying the bill, Kaching said goodbye to Luo Chen and the others, and left in a hurry. She was going back to practice swordsmanship. Luo Chen and Hu Zhaigong walked hand in hand on the streets of Liyue. Liyue at night was very beautiful, with people coming and going. It was the most prosperous city in Teyvat. Even at night, people could happily go out shopping and play. The country of contract, after seeing it today, I really can't imagine the gap between countries. Hu Zhaigong couldn't help but sigh. Inazuma's resources are already poor and Ying's national lockdown order really shook Inazuma's foundation. The national lockdown order is really Ying's most stupid decree. Luo Chen sneered and said, Wait until Zhan is resurrected, and you'll see how Ying explains it to her. If you see Inazuma now, even if she is as gentle as Zhan, she will be furious, right? Hu Zhaigong guessed. Maybe, hum. Luo Chen hadn't finished speaking yet, as if he sensed something. He looked up and saw a well-dressed figure with the temperament of a kind old father walking towards him not far from the street. His aura was as heavy as a rock. What's wrong? Following Luo Chen's line of sight, Hu Zhaigong didn't find anything and asked in confusion. Morox. Luo Chen said softly. Obviously, the figure who came over also found Luo Chen. The next moment, two golden eyes met. Emperor Rock King? Hu Zhaigong looked at the man in the brown dragon-patterned robe and exclaimed. Zhongli paused for a moment and walked over directly, making Hu Zhaigong a little nervous. This is one of the oldest gods in Teyvat. Hello, friend. Can we go to the top of the mountain to have a chat? Zhongli walked over and said, Of course. Luo Chen nodded, took Hu Zhaigong, and disappeared directly on the spot. Zhongli felt the spatial fluctuations that remained in the original place, and a trace of shock appeared in his calm eyes. This power was the shocking power he felt before. The next moment, Zhongli also disappeared from the original place and appeared on the high mountain above the general affairs department. Looking at Luo Chun who had already arrived, he said, What is your name? Luo Chun. Luo Chun looked at Zhongli and said, Morix? That's right. Zhongli nodded, and he said seriously, Luo Chun, can you tell me what you're doing in Liyue? You should know that gods cannot enter the land of other gods at will. I have no ill intentions. I have heard that Liyue is the most prosperous country in the entire Teyvat and I am very curious. This time, I just brought my wife to travel to see the scenery of Liyue, Luo Chen said. Advertisement, ding, meet with rock god Morix, 
Unlock Cess Level Void Ruler Template. Unlock Void Key Over Limit. Void Key Eternal Tribulation. Suddenly, the system's voice came, and Luo Chun could clearly feel his power rising wildly, much stronger than before. Sure enough, it is still necessary to meet more of these people to unlock more templates. Then Lord Luo Chun, can you sign a contract with me? Zhongli asked. As the god of contract, he would not easily believe the words of a god unless a contract was signed. No one dared to violate the contract in front of him. It's okay to sign a contract, but Morix, fight me. Luo Chun, who got the power, is now a little excited. Isn't there an old man practicing in front of him? Zhongli looked at the belligerent Luo Chun and was slightly silent. Sure enough, he was worthy of being on the side of the Thunder God and was as belligerent as Balzabub. Since you have invited me, I can't refuse. Zhongli nodded. Divine light appeared on his body and his clothes changed into a platinum hooded robe. Let's go to the sea. If we fight here, we might destroy Liyue City, Morix said. His fighting spirit also rose. Don't forget what he relied on to rise. That's what I meant. Luo Chun nodded in agreement. Aiken, Hu Zhigong looked at Luo Chun with some concern. Morix is the oldest and most powerful god. Don't worry, it's just a competition. Luo Chun comforted. Wait for us to come back here. Now that the SS level ruler of the void power has been unlocked, according to the system, it is enough to easily defeat the top gods of Tevat. Be careful. Hu Zhigong had no choice but to nod. The next moment, Luo Chun and Morix disappeared directly on the spot. Two golden figures appeared above the ocean hundreds of kilometers away from Liyue. Morix clenched his hand slightly, and a golden spear appeared in his hand, which was the piercing rainbow spear. I've heard that rock god Morix suppressed many demons and showed endless killing in the demon war. The key of nothingness appeared in Luo Chen's hand, and he said with full fighting spirit, Please do your best, rock god. Except for the previous battle with the general, Luo Chun has never fought with all his strength, and he was not satisfied at all. Now that he has Morix to practice with him, he is naturally very happy. Thank you for your advice. Morix nodded, disappeared on the spot, and appeared next to Luo Chun the next moment, stabbing out with the piercing rainbow spear. It's a pity that he only stabbed in the air. Luo Chen's speed was much faster than Morix. With a phase shuttle, Morix was directly fixed in a small range of space shackles. Several subspace spears stabbed directly with the power of distorting space. Solid as a rock. The solid jade shield wrapped Morix, and the subspace spear hit it and exploded directly. The powerful force directly knocked Morix out. After finally stabilizing himself, he found that the jade shield was full of cracks and shattered the next moment. What a powerful attack power! Morix exclaimed. In the War of Demons, no one could break his jade shield so easily. Chapter 45. Morix, show your true strength. Luo Chen laughed loudly. He was Morix, one of the strongest gods. His strength was worthy of praise. In that case, Luo Chen, let's decide the outcome with one move. Morix nodded. Luo Chen's strength was enough to win his respect. The sky is moving, Morix said indifferently. The whole sky turned golden. Layers of clouds were blown away. A meteorite with a diameter of 100,000 meters slowly emerged from the clouds. The powerful breath alarmed all the immortals who lived in seclusion. They all looked into the distance with concern. The emperor actually used all his strength. For thousands of years, they had never seen the emperor use such great power. Luo Chen looked at the huge star and smiled with satisfaction. This was the power that a god should have. This is the time of judgment. Luo Chen's eyes were filled with golden light and endless black holes instantly unfolded behind Luo Chun, covering the sky and the sun. The star slowly fell down, causing the space to twist, and endless energy poured out from Luo Chen's black hole, bombarding the star. Almost instantly, the entire star turned into powder, and the next moment, endless energy directly enveloped Morix. Along with the bombardment of energy, the ocean rolled up thousands of meters of huge waves, and even Liyue port hundreds of kilometers away was affected. The tsunami is coming. All the people on the beach fled in fear. It was still calm just now. Why did this huge wave suddenly rise? The thousand-meter-high waves were like a curtain covering the sky. If they poured directly into Liyue, I am afraid that the entire Liyue city would be destroyed in an instant. Just when everyone showed despair and the tsunami of thousands of meters was about to reach Liyue port, a golden black hole appeared out of thin air and swallowed the tsunami directly, and the ocean also returned to calm directly. Oh my god, what just happened? 
The scattered crowd was still in shock. It seemed that a tsunami had just occurred. They had never seen the tsunami that covered the sky and the sun. But the next moment, it was swallowed by a strange hole. Lord Rock, bless you. Time's in. Liyue Harbor was full of people praying to the Rock King. The scene just now must be Lord Rock blessing them. Not far away, where the Fox Palace was located, the figures of the two suddenly appeared. Zhongli returned to his original appearance, but his head was still wet and the whole person was in a mess. But there was no dust on Luo Chen's body. It was obvious that Luo Chen won this battle. Your power is very strong, Zhongli said seriously. I also recognize you, Morix. You are worthy of being the strongest god. Luo Chen stretched out his hand. Zhongli stretched out his hand and shook it with him, and then took out a contract composed of the power of the rock god. Thank you for protecting Liu just now, Zhongli said. Just now, he was suppressed by Luo Chen's energy and could not move. He watched the tsunami almost submerged Liu at harbor. The fight between you and me is just a competition. If innocent people are hurt, it will not be good. Luo Chen shook his head and said, I will eliminate the disaster caused by me. Luo Chen took the contract and looked at it. It was a treaty that did not do anything to damage Liu. He signed his name very readily. The contract is done. Those who break their promises will be eaten by rocks. Zhongli stopped talking halfway. He seemed to be unable to beat Luo Chun. Don't worry, Morix. I like Liu Port very much and will not harm it. He patted Zhongli's shoulder. I am resting now. Luo Chun does not need to call me Morix. Just call me Zhongli. Zhongli shook his head and said, Now I live in the human world. If I call me Morix, it will be a bit annoying, right? Okay. Luo Chun nodded and said, In that case, what are you doing in the human world now, Zhongli? I'm a guest official in the Wangxing Hall. Zhongli said, Advertisement, it's late. If I don't go back to the Wangxing Hall, I'm afraid the hall master will nag me again. Zhongli calculated the time and said goodbye to Luo Chun. Are you a great rock god afraid of a mortal? Luo Chin joked. I'm not afraid. Zhongli shook his head and said, It's just that, um, I can't handle that kid. Then go back quickly. Luo Chin smiled. As expected of Hu Tao, she is the only one who can control Zhongli, right? Goodbye. Zhongli said, nodded to Hu Zhai Palace, and disappeared on the spot. Aiken, holding Luo Chen's arm, sitting on the stone, Hu Zhai Gong looked at Luo Chun and said, You too. You just came to Liyue, and you fought with the God of Rock. It's just a friendly exchange. Luo Chun smiled awkwardly. It's not good. He just got the power and just wanted to fight. Fortunately, Morix's temper is almost worn out now. You. You are about to become a martial arts fanatic like Ying. Hu Zhaigong said angrily. No, no. Luo Chun smiled and said, I'm not good at fighting. Who? Hu Zhaigong didn't believe it and expressed contempt for it. Don't do this next time. I'm afraid you will get hurt. Hu Zhaigong buried his head in Luo Chin's arms and said softly, Don't worry, it won't happen next time. Luo Chin nodded and said, Even the Rock King Emperor is no longer my opponent. Who else can threaten me? The cool breeze of the autumn is very pleasant and refreshing. But at this moment in the Chuanyu Pavilion, Ningguang is uneasy. She also saw the tsunami just now. That kind of power does not seem to be a natural disaster. Who? Ningguang clenched her hands. Although the tsunami was swallowed by an unknown force, if it appears again, how should Li Yue avoid it? At this time, a golden figure appeared in the Chuanyu Pavilion. Emperor. Ningguang was stunned, recognized the Rock King Emperor, and saluted quickly. Tianquan Star. Liyue has a distinguished guest. His name is Luo Chun, a powerful god. From the Death Star, Morix's deep voice came. Be sure to treat him well and don't annoy him. Luo Chun? Ningguang nodded. Beidou told her in the afternoon that there was a senior official from Inazuma named Luo Chun. Damn Beidou. You didn't tell me he was a god? Ningguang complained in her heart, then looked at Morix and said, Emperor, the tsunami just now? It was the aftermath of my sparring with Luo Chun. Don't worry. Morix said, I have signed a contract with him. He will not endanger the safety of Liu. I see. Ningguang nodded. Since Luo Chin and Emperor have signed a contract, the scene just now should not appear again. Right? I think you have understood. Remember not to neglect him. Morix repeated and disappeared in the Chuanyu Pavilion. It's late tonight, tomorrow. Looking at the time, Ningguang felt that it was late today, so it would be better not to disturb Luo Chen. Chapter 46 on the second morning, the seven stars of Liu sat together for a meeting to discuss Luo Chen. 
Seeing that everyone was present, Kuching said impatiently, Ningguang, if you have anything to say, please tell me. I am very busy with my mission today, and I don't have time to waste time here with you. Yu Hengxing, please be patient, Ningguang said calmly. Since everyone is here, I will make it short, Ningguang said. I believe everyone saw the terrible tsunami last night. That was the battle between the emperor and a god, Ningguang said solemnly. And that god is now in Liyue City. What? That tsunami was caused in this way? Kai Yingxing exclaimed. The emperor? Don't worry. The emperor told me that this god is a friend of the emperor. And the two of them just fought and learned from each other. Fighting and learning from each other? Such a big scene. Almost destroyed Liyue City. Is this what the gods consider? Kuching snorted coldly. Yu Hengxing, don't talk about gods casually. Taiyang Shuangxing frowned and said, Didn't the gods solve this problem? Taiyang Shuangxing is right. Ningguang nodded and said, The emperor issued an oracle last night, asking us to entertain this god well and make sure that this god has a good time in Liyue City. This god is called Luochun. He arrived in Liyue yesterday on the Death Star. I will send you his appearance characteristics later. When you meet him, Please be sure to maintain the proper respect, Ningguang said. Wait, Kaching suddenly said loudly. She looked at Ningguang and asked, What did you say his name is? Luo Chun, Ningguang repeated. It's him. Kaching thought of the handsome young man yesterday and gritted her teeth. This guy turned out to be a god. No wonder he looked so strange when she questioned the god. Kaching felt that she was just like a clown, questioning the god in front of the god. Yu Hengxing, do you know him? Ningguang frowned and asked. Yes, of course I do. Kaching bit her lip and said angrily. Ningguang looked at Kaching's appearance and frowned slightly, saying, Yu Hengxing, I know your thoughts and cognition. You discuss the emperor. The emperor is tolerant and loves his people, but you must be respectful enough to foreign gods. It is nothing but stupid to make enemies with a god. Of course I know. Kaching glared at Ningguang and said, I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. We are friends after all. Do you have to say so much? Humph, Luo Chen's temperament is not as serious as you think. He is an easygoing god. Kaching snorted coldly. If it's just this matter, then I'll leave first. After that, Kaching turned her head and left without looking back. Yu Hengxing said that she and Luo Chen are friends? Kai Hengxing said in disbelief. Will gods really be friends with humans? I know Kaching. She won't do it for no reason. Ningguang waved her hand and said. In that case, Please remember what I said. In a hotel in Liyue. Ah, getting up from the bed. Looking at the stunning beauty lying next to him, Luo Chen's heart was full of satisfaction. Hu Zhigong gave him everything, and he also had a second fox lady in good faith. Aiken, are you awake? Hu Zhigong rubbed his sleepy eyes, sat up, and the quilt fell on his forehead, revealing a beautiful spring scene. Advertisement, yes. Hugging Miss Fox into his arms, Luo Chun smiled evilly and touched her all over. Oh no, it hurts, Hu Zhai Gong looked at Luo Chen pitifully and groaned. Ah Chun, what are your plans for today? Hu Zhai Gong asked. I plan to go to the General Affairs Department later. Didn't the Son of God prepare some C Ganoderma and a letter for Ganyu? I'll send it to her, Luo Chen said. Then go ahead. I don't want to go out today. You cow. Hu Zhai Gong yawned and hid in the quilt. The quilt wrapped herself tightly. She was going to stay in bed all day today. Okay, then I'm leaving. Luo Chen leaned over and kissed Hu Zhigong's rosy little mouth gently, then turned and left the room. He went downstairs to eat something, and then bought some breakfast, which Luo Chen brought in to Hu Zhigong. Hu Zhigong was already asleep, with a hint of blush and satisfaction on her charming face. She put the breakfast on the table, used the power of space to keep the food warm, and then Luo Chen gently closed the door and left the room. Walking on the streets of Li Yue, Luo Chun casually pulled a passerby over, asked where the General Affairs Department was, and walked over. Not even a few minutes after walking, Luo Chun was suddenly blocked by a smaller figure. Luo Chun looked over. Oh, it was a girl. Her face was full of youthful vitality, she was slender, and there was a blooming plum blossom in her eyes. The girl wore a Chinkuan hat, and there was a bright plum blossom on the hat. The whole person looked quirky. The only flaw was that the girl's front was too flat. There was no curve that a girl should have. They were all 16 years old. And you can see how well Xiaogong developed? Hey, a new face. Hu Tao greeted. Hello, my name is Hu Tao, the 77th generation head of Wangsheng Hall, brother. Are you interested in learning about our business? Hmm. Luo Chen stroked his chin, looked at the girl in front of him and said, Wangsheng Hall? 
The name sounds unlucky. Don't say that. Birth, aging, sickness and death. Yin and Yang are in order. This is human nature. Hu Tao shook her head and retorted. According to you, Wang Sheng Hall is in the business of dead people? Luo Chen raised his eyebrows and looked at Hu Tao and smiled. Um, yes, yes. Hu Tao nodded quickly and said, So, brother, are you interested in learning? No, I'm still young. Luo Chen smiled. He just wanted to tease the girl in front of him. Don't say that. There will always be such a day. Hu Tao said with a smile. Why not prepare in advance? The box of Wangxing Hall is sturdy and durable. Even if it is hundreds of years, it will be immortal. Luo Chen finally understood why someone drove Hu Tao away. And now our Wangxing Hall has a big discount recently. Buy one get one free, more choices, more rewards, buy more, and you can also get a hundred-year-old wooden box. That's great. Luo Chen thought for a few minutes. Looking at Luo Chen thinking, Hu Tao was a little surprised. Usually at this time, other people would chase her away. This guy is also a strange man. However, Luo Chen soon asked in Hu Tao's expectant eyes, But what if I don't die? With the power of life and death, Luo Chen must be immortal. And he can also make people around him immortal. Huh. Hu Tao was stunned. She really didn't expect Luo Chen to say that. Chapter 47 Huh. Hu Tao looked at the young man in front of him in surprise. What nonsense was he talking about? How could a person not die? Hm. Luo Chen looked at the dazed Hu Tao, nodded and smiled. Impossible. Yin and Yang are in order. Fate is unpredictable. Although death is difficult to predict, it also has its own rules. As human beings, we must respect death and not easily provoke it. Hu Tao came back to her senses and said seriously. Then you say, is there a possibility that I am not a human? Luo Chen approached the girl and whispered. How can the gods who control life and death be disturbed by death? Hu Tao looked at Luo Chen blankly, only to see Luo Chen walking away with a smile. Exclamation point. Hu Tao came back to her senses, looked at Luo Chen who was walking away, and bit her little tiger teeth. Damn it. She used to tease others. I didn't expect that she would be completely defeated today. Even gods cannot escape death. Hu Tao muttered to herself. She didn't believe what Luo Chen said. Even the king of rocks would eventually pass away. Wouldn't he still have to guard his body in the hall of rebirth? Thinking of this, Hu Tao's mood improved again and she walked away humming a little tune. I'll bask in the sun when the sun comes out. Hey Chu. At this time, Zhongli, who was listening to music in the brothel, couldn't help but sneeze. The person next to him asked with concern, Mr. Zhongli, do you have a cold? Do you need to go to Bubulu to get some medicine? Thank you for your concern. Zhongli shook his head and said, Maybe I caught a cold last night. Drink some hot tea to drive away the cold. Strange? Why am I sneezing? Zhongli was secretly surprised. After teasing the girl, Luo Chen's mind was obviously much happier. Not long after, he had arrived at the General Affairs Department. Hello. The General Affairs Department is a restricted area. No outsiders are allowed to enter. The Qinyan army at the door stopped Luo Chun and said, Then please help inform Secretary Ganyu of you hating and tell him that a friend is looking for him. Luo Chen said, If he is not allowed to enter, then he won't enter. Friend of Secretary Ganyu? Why haven't I seen you before? A Qinyan army frowned and looked at Luo Chun. When did Secretary Ganyu have such a handsome male friend? You know, his family was originally very rich. He came here to be a Qinyan army because of Ganyu. He liked Ganyu for so long, but he never even got close to Ganyu. Question mark. Luo Chen frowned and looked at the Qinyan army and asked, What is the relationship between Ganyu's friend and you? Do you have to know him? Humph, Secretary Ganyu is busy with work. It is inconvenient to disturb him at this time. Please leave first. The Qinyan army waved his hand and drove Luo Chen away. Luo Chen felt a nameless fire in his heart. I repeat again, go and inform Ganyu right now. Who do you think you are? The dandy Qin Yanjun was immediately unhappy. He stared at Luo Chen and said loudly, I warn you to leave the General Affairs Department right now, otherwise I will arrest you for disturbing public order. Heh. <laughs> Luo Chen laughed in anger, with anger rising in his eyes. Forget it, Brother Hao. The General Affairs Department is on duty, don't make a big deal. Another Qin Yanjun came to stop him. It's just a notification. I'll go and tell him. Another Qin Yanjun said, You know the character of Gan Yu's secretary, most likely he won't meet? Don't go. Who dares to order me? Qin Yanjun roared. Is this a matter of notifying Gan Yu? This is his dignity. 
Advertisement no one has dared to talk to him like this since he was a child. Leave. Another Chinyan army looked at Luo Chun and waved his hand, signaling him to leave quickly. He dares. Chinyan army shouted angrily and pointed the white tassel spear in his hand directly at Luo Chun. Do you dare to take a step? How dare a mere ant insult the gods like this? Luo Chin's eyes were angry. He had promised Morix, and he didn't want to be on the same level as an ant, but he didn't expect that he would dare to be so excessive. He even dared to point a weapon at him. The white tassel spear in Chinyan army's hand broke in Luo Chin's anger, and ordinary weapons couldn't even suppress Luo Chin's momentum. In an instant, a huge pressure instantly enveloped the entire general affairs department, making everyone feel depressed. Zhongli seemed to have sensed something, his eyes changed drastically, and he immediately walked out quickly. Mr. Zhongli, you haven't paid the bill yet, the storyteller shouted. As usual, put it on the account of the rebirth hall. I have something urgent. Zhongli left quickly. In the horrified eyes of everyone, the Chinyan army was directly pulled into the air by an inexplicable force. In a country known as the Contract, where the world's wealth gathers, there are such scumbags. Luo Chin's eyes were indifferent. Sure enough, where there are people, there are rivers and lakes. This kind of playboy who is uneducated and unskilled can also become a Chinyan army. It is really a shame for the Chinyan army. The power of space slowly squeezed, and the seven orifices of the Chinyan army began to bleed, and screams rang out. Lord Luo Chun, show mercy. At this time, a pleasant voice came, and everyone looked over. It was Ningguang and Ganyu. The one who spoke was naturally Ningguang. Show mercy? Ningguang, is this how you treat guests in Liyue? Luo Chun said coldly. Sorry, Lord Luo Chun. He is just an ordinary Chinyan army and doesn't know your identity. Ningguang explained quickly. A small army of Chinyan dares to embarrass me like this? If it were an ordinary common people, wouldn't he have been bullied to death? Luo Chun said angrily. Just one sentence. Convict someone? Send him to jail? If it were an ordinary family, wouldn't he have ruined it? Ningguang, you have also risen to your current position from a poor commoner. He dares to do this, and just one sentence wants me to let him go? Could it be that he has been in the position of Tianquan star for too long? Has he forgotten the poor days before? Luo Chen stared at Ningguang. Or, now that he is rich, he can treat the common people as nothing? Ningguang's face changed drastically, and then she fell silent. She suddenly didn't dare to talk. The person in front of her was the god that the Rock King Emperor had specifically asked to treat well. It was hard to imagine what consequences his words could cause and he actually put such a big hat on her. Lord Luo Chun, Ganyu was about to speak, but suddenly saw a figure and felt relieved. The Rock King Emperor is here, so they can rest assured. Luo Chun, I'm sorry that this happened. It's my fault, Morik said. Please let him go. I will teach him a lesson. Just consider it as a favor I owe you. Luo Chun looked at Morix. On that divine face, only he could see a feeling of request. The death penalty can be avoided, but the living crime cannot be escaped. Luo Chen nodded, waved his hand, and the limbs of this Chinyan army were twisted and shattered. He screamed and fainted. Luo Chen threw him aside like throwing garbage. He also had his own considerations. After all, it was in Liyue. It would not be good to kill him directly. It was too disrespectful to Morix. After all, his dog life was not as good as a favor from Morix. Chapter 48 Thank you. Morix got Luo Chin's answer inside. I don't want to see it a second time, Morix. You should understand what I mean. Luo Chin didn't give Morix any face and said indifferently. I understand. I won't. I promise. Morix decided to go back and send a dream to the entire Liyue people. Don't bully others and don't cause trouble in the short term. Morix didn't say much, nodded at Luo Chun and disappeared on the spot. Don't let him appear in front of me a second time. Luo Chun said coldly. Carry him away. Ningguang waved her hand. She would not let this Chinyan army go easily. She wanted to pull out all the connections behind him. Lord Luo Chun, please come this way. Luo Chun nodded and followed Ningguang. He looked at the Chinyan army who had just dissuaded him and praised him. You are very good and have principles. Ningguang looked at the Chinyan army in surprise, nodded and remembered his appearance. In the VIP room, Ningguang looked at Ganyu and said, Ganyu, please make some tea. Use my top grade golden silk leaf. Okay. Ganyu nodded. Golden silk leaf is a good tea collected by Ningguang. It is only available in Xiaoying Manor. There is only one tea tree in Teyvat. 
The annual output does not exceed 10 tails. One tail of tea leaves is as high as tens of millions of mora. After Ganyu left, Ningguang looked at Luo Chun and said apologetically, I'm very sorry, Lord Luo Chun. I made you laugh today, but I really didn't. No need to say more. Luo Chun waved his hand and interrupted Ningguang. He smiled and said, Actually, I said that on purpose. Huh? Ningguang looked at Luo Chun in confusion. As long as people step over the class, they will no longer empathize with the people. This is an eternal truth. Luo Chun said lightly, I understand you and I understand the human heart. There are too many such things, and they are very common. Let's not talk about those people in ancient times who became kings and generals because they couldn't afford to eat. After they became famous, they still bullied the people. Even a host can openly mock the audience after making money. The human heart is like this. No, not just the human heart. Even Luo Chun, after he has absolute power and becomes a god, can he really empathize with the experience of mortals? The will will change with the passage of time. You cannot empathize with suffering, and you can become high and mighty. But the only thing to do is not to change the bottom line in your heart. Obviously, although Ningguang holds the power of a country and has become rich enough to rival a country from nothing, at least she has not forgotten the common people and has not done anything to hurt the common people. The words Luo Chun said to her were a warning to her and to himself. I understand. Ningguang was very smart. She understood what Luo Chen meant inside. When I was a kid, I used to sell mora meat from Yaoguang Beach to the dock. My family was poor. Even a steamed bun had to be divided into three portions. When I was bullied, I could only sell mora meat with a smile. Looking back now, it's really a bad memory that I don't want people to miss. Ningguang shook her head and said. The two chatted here and there. In the chat with the gods, Ningguang didn't dare to grasp the rhythm of their conversation and could only treat it as a casual chat. Tea is here. Not long after, Gan Yu pushed the door in and poured a cup of tea for Luo Chun and Ningguang. Today, I came mainly to find Miss Gan Yu. Luo Chun said, Huh, me? Gan Yu was stunned and then said, Lord Luo Chun, just call me Gan Yu. Advertisement Luo Chun nodded and said, Actually, I didn't come to Liyue for any government affairs this time. I just came to travel and enjoy the scenery. I have a letter from the Eightfold God Son for you, and some see Ganoderma. Is it the God Son's sister? Ganyu said happily after hearing Luo Chen's words. She and the Eightfold God Son hadn't seen each other for hundreds of years, so she naturally missed them. He handed the letter to Ganyu, and at the same time, many hardcover C. Ganoderma boxes were neatly placed in front of Ganyu. Ganyu happily put away the C. Ganoderma and said, God Son's sister. I haven't seen her for hundreds of years. I remember when she was a child. She was small and pink. When she came to Liyue as a guest with Lord Mingxian, she especially liked to lie on my back and act like a spoiled child, and she would even compete with me for a Qingxin. Luo Chun. Why do I feel that Ganyu's words are very similar to that woman? She is indeed an old man in an empty nest. Cough, cough. The disciple of Master Lian Jifeng. The two have exactly the same way of speaking. Ah, uh, sorry. Realizing that she and her master had learned to talk, Ganyu blushed slightly and apologized quickly. It's okay. The son of God won't mind. Luo Chun waved his hand and said, but secretly thought in his heart that he couldn't let the son of God hear this. Otherwise he would bite him? Fox teeth are very sharp. Lord Luo Chun, since you are here to visit Liyue, why don't you come to my Kunyu pavilion and sit down? Ningguang invited. I will arrange a banquet at noon. I have heard that there is a beautiful sky pavilion above Liyue, and many people have spent everything to go up and see it, Luo Chen said, but forget it today, I have some other plans. In that case, Ningguang will wait for Lord Luo Chun in the Kunyu pavilion. Ningguang heard this, without saying much, just nodded. You are busy with official duties, so I will take my leave first. Luo Chun stood up, Ganyu and Ningguang stood up to see him off, but he waved his hand to stop them. No need to see you off. Watching Luo Chun slowly walk out of the general affairs department, Ningguang's face instantly darkened. She rarely gets angry, but this time, she was really angry. Come here, call in the Qinyan army who was on duty just now, Ningguang said with a cold face. Yes. After a while, the Qinyan army was brought in front of Ningguang and said tremblingly, Lord Ningguang, tell me, who was the person who offended Lord Luo Chun this morning while on duty with you? Ningguang asked coldly. He. His name is Wang Hao, a fictitious name. Please do not bring it in. I only know that his family is very rich. Qinyan army said tremblingly. 
I remember that the General Affairs Department did not stipulate that it was not allowed to report. Why? We were stopped when looking for Ganyu? Ningguang asked. Do you know the reason? This. Qinyan Army glanced at Ganyu next to him and did not dare to continue. However, Ningguang soon understood what he meant and laughed in anger. Great. You chased women to the Qinyan Army. The Qinyan Army is to protect the people of Liyue, not to guarantee your identity when chasing women. How dare you? A good for nothing. Reach into the Qinyan Army. What's your name? Ningguang asked the Qinyan Army. My name is Xiang Ming. The Qinyan Army replied. Xiang Ming. From now on, you will be the team leader, mainly responsible for the safety of the General Affairs Department. Ningguang said. Ganyu, help me write a text. Chapter 49 Okay, Ganyu nodded. Thank. Thank you, Lord Ningguang. Xiang Ming opened his eyes wide. Wasn't the surprise too sudden? Direct promotion, and on duty at the General Affairs Department, this is definitely the dream of all Qinyan Army. Being on duty at the General Affairs Department, the future official career is definitely smooth. After all, this is the highest level of the entire Liyue. If you are favored by a big boss, your life will be different immediately. You shouldn't thank me, but thank yourself for what you have done. Ningguang waved his hand and said, As a Qinyan army, you must remember your mission for the country and the people. You are to protect the people, not to oppress them. Always remember it. Xiang Ming stood up and saluted. Well, Ningguang nodded and said, Go, take the notice to the General Affairs Department to handle the promotion. Ganyu handed the stamp document to Xiang Ming. Okay, Lord Ningguang, Lord Ganyu, I'll take my leave. Xiang Ming said, turned around and left. Ah. Ningguang rubbed her forehead with some tiredness. Luo Chun was walking on the road. Just when he reached a corner, he was thinking about something and didn't pay attention. He bumped into a figure head on. Luo Chun felt that he was hit by a soft and plump body. As a god, Luo Chun naturally did not move. Instead, the woman opposite sat on the ground. Ouch. With a cry of surprise, Luo Chun looked up and was shocked. Oh my god. Isn't this a lady? The eighth seat of the Fatui the miserable woman who will be chopped into ashes by the general in the future. Luo Chin looked at the lady sitting on the ground. It must be said that she was really wearing roasted clothes. No wonder so many people called the lady roast chicken. Although the lady is a villain, she is really big. Bigger than all the women Luo Chun has ever seen. Even the general and the son of God are so plump. Compared with her, they are a little small. The lady looked up angrily. Someone dared to bump into her? Looking up, what caught her eyes was a young man with white hair and golden eyes, who seemed to be looking at her in a somewhat rude manner. Disrespectful person. The lady stood up and looked at Luo Chun angrily. She was more than 1.8 meters tall, just a little shorter than Luo Chun. Before Luo Chun could speak, the lady slapped him. The next moment, the lady's arm was firmly grasped by Luo Chun, who looked at the lady in front of him coldly. This crazy woman. Has the anger of hundreds of years burned her brain? Huh. The lady struggled hard, but she couldn't break free. She was a little surprised. She was the witch of fire, but her physical strength was not as good as the young man in front of her. Luo Chin didn't say much, and the irresistible force dragged the lady into a small alley. Looking for death, ice rose around the lady, as if to freeze Luo Chun, but it didn't work for Luo Chun. Luo Chin directly stretched out his hand to pinch the lady's neck, lifted her up with one hand, and pressed her against the wall. M. The feeling of suffocation made the lady's face flushed, and she slapped Luo Chin's arm with her hands, but it was useless. Just when the lady felt like she was going to faint, Luo Chun let go of her hand, and the lady fell directly to the ground, kneeling on the ground and coughing. Madam, arrogant woman, Luo Chun pinched the lady's chin, forced her to raise her head, leaned down, and looked at this delicate face and said lightly, Didn't your queen teach you to respect others? Advertisement, who are you? How do you know me? The lady asked with difficulty. Pa. Luo Chun slapped the lady in the face with his backhand, leaving a blood red mark on her face. He had no sympathy for women. He didn't have much affection for women. To be precise, the Fatui were not good people. Now I ask you questions. Who allowed you to ask me? Luo Chun said coldly. Who gave you the courage to face the gods? Luo Chun said lightly. Did you get the courage from the slap in Mondstadt against the wind god Barbados? The lady didn't say anything. Staring at Luo Chun, she didn't know why the second god appeared in Liyue, when Morix had already signed a contract with the queen. Tisk, what a disgusting look. Luo Chun slapped the lady again with his backhand. 
This woman just needs to be disciplined. Luo Chen didn't like the lady, but he was not as cold and ruthless as the general. He was very sympathetic to women. Yes, sympathetic to women. The lady's mouth was bleeding, but she still said nothing. Now she realized how insignificant she was in front of the gods. She had just tried to mobilize the power of the Witch of Flame, but found that she couldn't use that power in front of Luo Chun. The power was clearly in her body, but she couldn't use it, as if it was suppressed. It shouldn't be like that. That was her most fundamental power. It was the eternal fire that was burning her life all the time. It would not go out until she was burned out. Why couldn't she use it? My power? How could it be? The lady's eyes were red, and she felt the powerlessness in her weak body. She shook her head in disbelief. The usual feeling of control at will was gone, replaced by the feeling of emptiness after exhaustion. Rosalind Cruz Shika Lofat, I know everything about you, let's have fun. Luo Chin leaned over and said softly in front of the panicked lady. Luo Chin said, don't struggle in vain. Your power and everything about you have been sealed by me. Now you are no different from ordinary people. How could it be? The lady covered her ears in pain. She glared at Luo Chin and screamed, don't call me by this name. I am a lady. I am the eighth executive of the Fatui. Really? Luo Chin sneered. Rosalind, this is the name that carries all your previous memories. No. Rosalind's eyes under the mask were filled with anger and pain. Luo Chun reached out and gently took off Rosalind's mask. In an instant, her beauty made Luo Chun a little surprised. She was a typical blonde beauty with skin as white and smooth as snow. It was a pity that two slaps on it destroyed the beauty. Remember, my name is Luo Chun. Remember this name well? Luo Chun lifted Rosalind's chin and said, he will be your salvation for the rest of your life. Even if it is sin and pain, I can redeem you. Luo Chun said lightly. Before that, I allow you to seize the heart of the rock god Morix. Luo Chun turned and walked out. She would become his caged bird, but not now. After all, he was just traveling in Liyue. I never need redemption. No. The lady glared at Luo Chun and snorted with gritted teeth. Really? Luo Chan stopped and turned his head to look at the lady who was kneeling on the ground helplessly, revealing an elusive smile. Then let's wait and see. P.S. The lady will definitely not die after the showdown. I like big sisters with big breasts. Of course, this arrogant lady will definitely not die, and she needs to be trained. Chapter 50 As for running? The power of the ruler of the void has been implanted in the lady's body and she can't run away no matter where she goes. The lady looked at the young man who had already walked away and found that the power in her body had been restored, but she didn't have the courage to chase him. Damn it, Luo Chun, who is he? Can he even seal the power of the queen? The lady gritted her teeth and touched her face, only to find that her mask had been taken away by the other party. Damn guy. With a curse, the lady returned to the hotel angrily. Madam, seeing the lady in such a mess, the Thunder Firefly Warlock hurriedly came up. Get away, the lady shouted angrily. Forget what I look like today. Otherwise, don't blame me for burning you to ashes. Yes, the Thunder Firefly Warlock knelt down tremblingly and said. Humph. The lady returned to the house angrily. Luochun, you are damned. You made me lose face. The angry lady smashed everything in the house. Unlike the lady's anger, Luochun was very happy at this time. He hummed a little tune. He didn't expect that he would gain so much from this trip today. Gained a lady. Luo Chun clearly remembered the lady's background. The most important thing was that when he sealed the lady just now, Luo Chun discovered the most important thing about the lady, that she was still a virgin. Luo Chun was still a little bit of a clean freak. Compared with Prime Minister Chao's ambition, he still preferred pure girls. Luo Chun. As he walked, Luo Chun heard a shout. Looking back, it turned out to be Kaching. Hello. Looking at Kaching jogging over, Luo Chan greeted her with a spring breeze on his face. What's the good news? So happy. Kaching muttered and ran to Luo Chan, taking a breath. Luo Chan, you are actually a god. Kaching asked with her hands on her hips. Looking at Kaching's expression, Luo Chan laughed. What's wrong? I didn't say I was a mortal. Advertisement, um. Kaching suddenly said a little embarrassedly. Don't mind what I said yesterday. I'm not disrespecting the gods. I just think that if everything depends on the guidance of the gods and humans don't work hard, then what is the meaning of human existence? I understand. Luo Chin smiled and said, I don't think you're wrong. You are more sober than anyone else. Huh. Kaching widened her eyes. 
Luo Chen actually agreed with her idea, but yesterday? Gods are not omniscient and omnipotent, and they will naturally make mistakes and be confused. Luo Chen explained. For ordinary people, if they blindly believe in gods, they will lose their own thinking. We have to admit that human wisdom is vast and great. Without the protection of gods, we can still overcome difficulties one after another. Luo Chen said, To tell you the truth, I am not a god in this world. I have also witnessed a godless country, from weak to strong, relying on the wisdom and labor of the people, becoming a great country that can stand at the top of the world. Really? Kaching was surprised and asked expectantly, Can you tell me about that country? Of course. Luo Chen nodded and said, There are no gods in that world, and naturally there is no rule of gods. Humans can only rely on themselves to govern themselves. At first, they believed in the divine right of kings, and one person ruled a country with a strict hierarchy. Luo Chan said, Under such governance, there have been wise monarchs, and there have also been tyrants who ignored the people. Later, people woke up, and after a tragic war, they rebuilt their homes and established a great country where the people are the masters. Facts have proved that human wisdom is not inferior to that of gods. Luo Chen said seriously. In just a few decades, they have turned a weak and backward country into a big country with a say in the whole world. Then they are too great, Kaching said in a daze. The people have become the masters of the country. But what I want to tell you is that Teyvat is different from that world, and the existence of gods cannot be ignored. Luo Chen said, This is what I told you yesterday. In that world, there is a weapon called nuclear weapons which is as powerful as an attack caused by the full force of gods. Luo Chan said, As long as this weapon is fully deployed, it basically represents the demise of human civilization. So, nuclear weapons are, to a greater extent, a strategic deterrent weapon. Only when you have nuclear weapons can you have a say in the international community, and others will not dare to bully you. Luo Chan said, And in Teyvat, every god is equivalent to a nuclear weapon. They basically won't take action, but their existence means that wars between countries will not easily break out. That's why I said that having no sword and having a sword without using it are two different things. Luo Chan said, Without the suppression of the Rock King Emperor, the outside world will only be eager to move against Liyue. So, Kaching, do you understand? Luo Chan smiled. I, I understand. Kaching lowered her head and whispered. After all, they still can't do without the Emperor. Don't be so depressed. I am also a friend of your emperor, Luo Chen comforted. Kaching, I can't tell you clearly that the Rock King Emperor admires you very much. Luo Chen looked at the purple cat head in front of him. Although Kaching seemed disrespectful to the gods and the emperor, she was actually a fanatical emperor fan. Isn't the room full of emperor figurines enough to prove it? The emperor's charm is really great. After all, there are two kinds of people in Liyue. One is the emperor fan, and the other is the twisted emperor fan. Oh no! There seems to be a third kind, the emperor's little black Zhongli. After 3,500 years of protection, even the rock king emperor will be tired. Luo Chun sighed. Kaching, continue to use your enthusiasm and efforts to change Liu. The next era of Liu will still be the era of human rule after all. Thank you, Luo Chun. Kaching nodded, and suddenly she was motivated again. Hearing Luo Chan say this, Kaching's blood boiled and she wanted to devote herself completely to the development of Liyue. Looking at the motivated Kaching, Luo Chen's eyes became strange. Bad things. It seems that he helped Zhongli to poor a girl. The girl, who was originally a workaholic, must work hard now. Zhongli must treat me to a meal? I pushed him to retire. But you should also pay attention to rest, Kaching. If you exhaust yourself, you can't help Liyue. After thinking for a while, Luo Chen felt that it was better to mention it. Got it. Kaching nodded and said, In this case, I'll go to work first. Luo Chun, I'll treat you to shopping when I'm free. Luo Chun looked at the vigorous girl who had run away and sighed. Poor Kaching. Thanks for watching. You can find the next videos in the playlist linked in the info card, directly on my channel, or right here on the screen. And as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to share it in the comments too.